Now, we proudly present Berwick Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Brought to you by First Columbia Bank and Trust. With you every step of the way. Welsh's Towing and Repair, Towing, Recovery, and Lockout Services. Axis Gymnastics Academy in Bloomsburg. Independence Ford, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Cooling, the way the earth intended. First Keystone Community Bank. Yesterday's traditions, tomorrow's visions. Mason's Monogram Service for all your Bulldog merchandise. Robert G. Dent heating and air conditioning in Light Street. Red's Roofing, the Roofing Ninjas in Berwick. Lehigh Valley Health Network, the region's leader in orthopedic and sports medicine. The Mayo Funeral Homes in Berwick and Shikshini. And by Wagner's Trophies and Engravables. Main Street in Bloomsburg. Now with Andy Ulickney, here's the voice of the dogs, Jim Doyle. Good evening, everyone. Tonight from Spark Stadium in Kingston, it's the Bulldogs against the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West. I am Jim Doyle, along with Dr. Alan Monaconis. The producer of this broadcast is Jake Klein. Well, year in and year out, the biggest rival on Berwick's schedule is Wyoming Valley West. But a lot of the luster is off this one for this 2022 season for a number of reasons. Berwick is just two and three. Wyoming Valley West is looking for their first win of the season. The Spartans come in at 0-5, and but it is an important game for the Bulldogs. Currently in the District 2 Quad A Power Rankings, eight teams will make it to the postseason. Berwick is seventh, and with a win or two, down the stretch, they could move up in those standings. Right now, if the season ended, they would be traveling to Crestwood to start the playoffs. It's Dallas first, Crestwood second, Valley View third, North Pocono, Honesdale, Wyoming area, Berwick, and Nanticoke is the eighth team. But again, we're only halfway through the season. A lot of those things can change. Berwick needs a win here tonight. Their last four opponents in the regular season right now have a combined record of 19 and 1. So this would be the most winnable of the games left on this schedule. The Bulldogs hoping that they can win their fifth straight over Wyoming Valley West. It was a tough one last year in an afternoon game here. 21 14. Berwick actually trailed 14 0 at the half. Wyoming Valley West was led by Isaiah Cobb, one of the best running backs in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Unfortunately for Wyoming Valley West, They have had one of those seasons where everything has gone wrong. Isaiah Cobb injured against Dallas, not in uniform tonight, and that is a huge chunk of their offense. Nick Giza, an outstanding tight end, not expected to play in this one as well. So those are arguably two of the best players Wyoming Valley West has, and they won't be in the lineup for this game tonight. So they are at a disadvantage for this one, even though it's a home game hoping to pull off what would be an upset at this point, considering the circumstances against the Bulldogs here tonight. Dr. Alan Lonaconis continues to fill in for the ailing Andy Ulichty for Berwick High School football on Friday nights. And Al, if there's a, a theme for Berwick in the second part of the season, I, I think it's a one-word theme, and that is finish. In their three losses, they've had the lead at halftime. In the first half, they look like the best team, and they just aren't able to finish yeah jim i agree with you there uh, i've seen them play those games unfortunately that you know berwick just hasn't been able to put a full game together in those very close games and those tough ones there uh last week was the same you know thing against why wilkes area uh they had their opportunities so wilkes area had a good game plan on but it just seems like in that second half they just they can't put it together or just hold it all the way through and I'm sure it's driving Coach Bennett nuts uh, as far as what he can do and his staff to try to put that all together. And again, you know, some guys are making mistakes at crucial times, and that happens in high school football, but it just seems that they just can't string it together. Obviously, it's a big disadvantage for Wyoming Valley West to be without Isaiah Cobb and Nick Giza, and that certainly makes it easier on Berwick. And yet, it frustrated to a certain point because you spend all week preparing for those you think you know what's going to happen it's going to be a heavy dose of isaiah cobb it's going to be some passes to the tight end now that's not there teddy jackson jr who's a very creative offensive coordinator is in that position for wyoming valley west from a berwick standpoint and sean sheptock the defensive coordinator you really don't know what you're going to face tonight Uh, that's a good point jim we were talking about that in the car on the way to the game uh, you know, it, it's tough. You're, you're coaching this, the, the players all week long. You're getting them ready to see certain things, certain keys to react to, and, and they get ready for that. 
and now they get in a game situation and they don't see those keys. They see something different, and now they may hesitate a little bit or maybe anticipate something a little bit differently and get out of position. So it'll take a little while for Berwick to kind of feel them out uh, to see what is happening. And at the same time for Wyoming Valley West, you know, they're missing some of those players. So what are they going to do on their side of the ball to make those adjustments, to, you know, for their offense and defense? Al will be by later with the keys to tonight's game. When we return, we'll hear from Jack Baranski, the head coach of the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne Counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. Digging deeper to make ends meet? Now you can get a 26% tax credit with a geothermal heat pump system from Climate Master. Climate Master geothermal systems tap the constant temperature of the earth to provide heating, cooling, and hot water while keeping your home comfortable all year long. And Climate Master systems are so efficient, you'll save up to 70% on your energy bill. The investment in a Climate Master system quickly pays for itself. Contact your local Climate Master dealer, Robert G. Dent Heating and Air Conditioning in Light Street. Go to robertgdentheating-ac.com. Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency. 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick. The roofing experts for all of our listening area. With over 30 years experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your roofing, decks, and siding. Specializing in metal roofs, rubber roofs, and shingles. Most of the work is done in one day. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Now located in Dushore and also serving Bradford and Sullivan counties with owner Harry Titus, a supporter of the Berwick football team and St. Jude Children's Hospital. Call 570-752-4351. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. We might be getting a little rain this weekend, the remnants of uh, Hurricane Ian, but uh, so far so good here at Spartan Stadium in Kingston tonight. And if it stays rain-free, it's going to be a beautiful night for high school football as Berwick and Wyoming Valley West renew their rivalry. This stadium, by the way, has been home to high school football since 1957, originally built for Kingston High School. They used to play uh, Coughlin on Thanksgiving Day. And back in 1977, NBC televised the Wyoming Valley West Coughlin game on, on Thanksgiving morning. It's also been uh, home to an American Football League exhibition game that was played here once. Uh, Ed Rutkowski is a big name from the Wilkes-Barre area. He was with the uh, Buffalo Bills, and they, so they played an exhibition game here. So it's... Uh, a stadium with uh, a lot of memories, including a lot of them for Berwick and Wyoming Valley West. It's where George Curry coached many games for Berwick. It's when he coached uh, three seasons for Wyoming Valley West in this Spartan Stadium. Well, as we mentioned earlier, it's halfway through the season. And Wyoming Valley West is still looking for their first win of the season. Despite their 0-5 record, several Spartans have played very well, according to head coach Jack Baranski. You know, we're really happy, of course, you know, Isaiah, Isaiah Cobb's Isaiah Cobb. We feel he's one of the best players in the conference. I thought that Lucas Zanzevich, our quarterback, who stepped into a, a, a tough situation, ha- has done a pretty good job. You know, he's had some really good moments, made some nice throws. And we like number four, Makai Wells, on the outside, a 6-5 wide out. He's gone and got some footballs for us. And our tight end, 88, Nick Giza, has... Uh, quietly amassed nine ten catches on the year which is a, a healthy number for a tight end if this second half of the season is going to go better than the first so what what has to happen where you need to improve the most there's no doubt it's on the offensive line our offensive line needs to continue to grow work together they're very young and collectively they don't have a lot of football under their belts in life so uh they're still learning the game uh, you know, they're not small-bodied. 
Uh, we have some nice-sized kids there, but they're just learning to play the game right now. What impresses you most about the Berwick? The first thing that jumps off at you when you, when you put on some Berwick film is team speed. Uh, playmakers all over the field. Uh, Bo Sheptock, Spencer Kishbaugh. Uh, I mean, Ryan Banks, limited carries right now. He's outstanding running back, okay? And, you know, the guy, the sleeper in the whole thing, I think, is the tight end, Rowan Slobinski. I think he's an outstanding football player. He, he's changed position now. He's playing some defensive end, brings a whole speed element to the defensive line, good size kid at 6'3", over 200 pounds. Uh, yeah, he, he he's a kid, I think, that is, is a sleeper amongst the bunch because you hear the other names. You know, the the Dre Wilkes, the Bo Sheptow, you hear those names, Kishbaugh, but, yeah, this, this Slobinski kid's equally as impressive. Well, this is a rivalry game. Uh, if you're going to pull off what probably would be considered an upset considering the records of the teams, what will your team have to do particularly well? It's always fundamentals against the Berwick team. Uh, you know, this is a well-coached Berwick football team. Coach Bennett and his staff done a great job. We're going to have to tackle effectively. We're going to have to block. We're going to have to control the football a little bit, gain first downs, build confidence. And, and, again, our offensive line growing up and getting that job done is a big part of it. But it's always, uh, again, a Berwick team is never going to beat themselves. You have to go beat a Berwick team. That's Jack Baranski in his fourth season as head coach of the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West, looking for win number one in this season, 0-5, coming into this matchup against Berwick here tonight. We'll check the starting lineup for the Bulldogs when we return. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independence Ford Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. More people in our area are choosing First Columbia Bank and Trust for their home mortgages. Is it time you discover why? First Columbia Bank offers competitive rates along with local expertise, local decisions, and local loan servicing. Let's see what First Columbia can do for you. Call today to get pre-qualified for a home loan from the number one mortgage lender in our area. Find out more or apply for your mortgage online at firstcolumbiabank.com. First Columbia Bank, with you every step of the way. Equal housing lender. First Columbia Bank. When you're planning your next big event, weddings, concerts, church festivals, even construction sites, remember Preferred Portables has you covered. Preferred Portables offers a luxury restroom trailer that even has hot water. Have no power? No problem. They can provide a generator to keep the lights on. Preferred Portables can provide sanitary service to campgrounds, carvels, parks, parties, and even has an emergency service 24 hours a day. Contact Preferred Portables to learn about events and contractor pricing. Email preferredportables at gmail.com. Go Burrick Bulldogs! It won't be long before tax time rolls around, so remember to visit Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting for your income tax needs. ND Accounting and Consulting handles both business and individual taxes, as well as offering a variety of accounting services, including payroll, auditing, and bookkeeping. For tax and accounting services, look for Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting with two locations, 214 Pine Street in Berwick and 5929 Main Road in Sweet Valley. This is Bird Football Coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Weekend number six of the 10-week regular season kicking off here tonight at Spartan Stadium in Kingston as the Bulldogs renewing their rivalry with the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West. Starting lineup offensively for Berwick, the tight end number six, Rowan Slavinsky. You heard uh, Jack Baranski sing his praises. Rowan is a 6'3", 215-pound senior, five catches on the season for 62 yards and one touchdown. The left tackle, number 71, Harrison Snyder, 6'1", 210, a junior. Bruce Hartman starts the left guard. He wears number 65. He's a 6-foot, 254-pound senior. Liam Carroll starts at... Starts at right tackle. He... Hundred 
281 pounds, senior. 12 receptions on the season for 210 yards and six touchdowns. He's been a big play man. He's carried the ball six times for 181 yards and three touchdowns. So nine touchdowns altogether on the season for Dre Wilk. The quarterback is number 12, Matt Lunzinski. 52% of his passes have been completed for 719 yards. Six yards rushing, 4.6 yards per carry for Sheptog. We'll also see Ryan Bankus, number five. He is a 5'7", 150... We saw a lot of last week. He wears number 32. He's a 5'8", 190. 6'2", 210-pound senior committed to Kent State. Ten catches on the season for 240 yards and one touchdown. He's also carried the ball four times for 65 yards and one touchdown. That's the starting lineup offensively for the Bulldogs under Mike Bennett, his first season as head coach. They come in with a record of two and three. We'll check the starting lineup for the Spartans when we return. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. Family tradition is the foundation of Nespoli Jewelers, a family tradition started by Joseph Nespoli and continued by his grandson, Jonathan. For three generations, Nespoli Jewelers have prided themselves on mixing fine with fashion. Jonathan can customize your engagement ring and wedding bands, design a unique piece of jewelry inspired by you, or simply help you find an affordable gift. Service, quality, creativity. Nespoli Jewelers, yesterday's principles, today's creations. East Front Street in Berwick and online at NespoliJewelers.com. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick. The roofing experts for all of our listening area. With over 30 years experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your roofing, decks, and siding. Specializing in metal roofs, rubber roofs, and shingles. Most of the work is done in one day. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas, now located in Dushore and also serving Bradford and Sullivan counties with owner Harry Titus, a supporter of the Berwick football team and St. Jude Children's Hospital. Call 570-752-4351. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident. Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. Northeast Pennsylvania is your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are First Keystone Community Bank, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Bulldogs hoping to improve on their 2-3 and three record, about to take on the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West here at Spartan Stadium in Kingston. Here's the starting lineup for the Spartans at the tight end. We mentioned Nick Giza is out. Uh, he's 6'4", 238, senior, and he's a force. Eight catches so far for 102 yards, but not expected to see him tonight. In his stead, we expect to see a couple people. Number 45, Logan Dwyer, a 5'11", 202-pound senior. Or Eric Munoz, number 3, a 5'10", 170-pound senior. Left tackles, number 65, John McLaughlin, 6'228", pounds, a senior. Elliot Thomas starts at left guard. He wears number 50, 6'2", 290, a junior. Tyler Ruddy is the starting center for the Spartans. He wears number 51. He is 6'180", pounds, a sophomore. Nasir Hall starts at right guard, number 54, 
227 a sophomore. Cole McKenzie starts at right tackle. He wears number 70. 6'1", 255 a junior. They have a very tall wide receiver at number four, Makai Wells. Six foot five, 180 pounds a junior. Seven catches for 164 yards. The quarterback, and we mentioned there are injury problems for tonight. Their injury problems started before the season even began. Luke Buss started for them a year ago, was expected to be their quarterback this season. He suffered an injury in the offseason, was not able to play at all. Lucas Zancevich has been in his place. Lucas is 6'1". 195, a junior, has completed 52% of his passes for 436 yards. He has, however, been susceptible to the interception. Just one touchdown and seven interceptions so far this season. With Isaiah Cobb out with injury, we expect to see a heavy dose of Paul Riggs, number 22. He is a 5'11", 175-pound sophomore. 25 carries for 118 yards and one touchdown. He's averaging 4.7 yards a carry. At the fullback, Jake Dubaskis, number two, 5'11", 185, a sophomore. And another wide receiver in addition to Makai Wells, number 36, Devin Suda. He is 5'9", 150 pounds, a senior. Those are the starters from the Spartans, Wyoming Valley West, under Jack Baranski and his fourth season as head coach. They come in 0-5, started the season with a couple of close losses to North Pocono 2013 and Scranton 21-14, and then they lost to Pittston area 22-0, and the last two weeks they had lost to two very, very good football teams, teams that will be at Crispin Field the next couple of weeks, Crestwood 49-21, and last week Dallas 45-14. So it's the Bulldogs against the Spartans, the 47th meeting in this long rivalry. The keys to tonight's game, Al Anacones. Thanks, Jim. Uh, for, you know, definitely for Valley West, the keys are basically uh, had to be changed a little bit from my standpoint coming to the game. Uh, find replacements to fill the holes for their running back, uh, Isaiah Cobb, who I was really looking forward to see running tonight. Uh, and also for their tight end, Nick Giza. I mean, I mean those are two big uh, players that they need to replace, both offensively and defensively. But I'm sure, as you've pointed out, uh, Tech Jackson Jr. will have something dialed up uh, to try to give Berwick some fits on offense. Uh, the second part, stop Berwick's big play potential. We know we know they have that. They've shown that in all the games this year uh, with Drew Wilk and obviously with Kishbaugh, but also you know some big game potentials there. And, and Valley West is going to have to be aware that obviously again with some of these major players out for Valley West that could be a difficult uh, a task for them uh, but they're they also have a lot of players going both ways we're gonna see like Mathis and Suda and Riggs uh, playing both ways so maybe you know they may wear down uh, you know the coach ought to be very concerned about that uh, they have to try to establish a running game with Paul Riggs and Tyler Mattis uh, in Isaiah Cobb's absence so I'll be curious to see how they do that and what they'll go to uh, in that respect Berwick, take advantage of the inexperienced offensive line. We heard, we heard Kurt Bennett talk about that earlier. Uh, last week, Wilkes-Barre areas uh, you know, found weaknesses and holes in the Berwick's defensive line, and they racked up uh, a lot of the yardage against the Bulldogs. Uh, so this week, uh, Berwick needs to establish and dominate the defensive line uh, also. Uh, give some some fits for that and force some interceptions get that younger quarterback to throw some things as you said He's susceptible to that Berwick only has three interceptions on the season uh, So it'd be nice to see uh, Berwick, uh, you know defensive people pick up a couple of interceptions and set up the offense uh, On the Berwick side of the ball take advantage again uh of the ground game. They need to establish that. You know, Wilkes-Barre again played a 4-4, and we saw a little t difficulty against Williamsport the 4-4, but the uh, Bulldogs have to get that front four going for them, push Valley West over, you know, out of the way, and get their running backs into the secondary. And last but not least, second half production. They need a Williamsport-like game uh, where we saw them play a full game all the way through. Uh, they have Tonight's to get the team to play a complete game on both ball. sides of the ball. So that's how I see it, Jim. Spartans have made their way on this, the near side of the field, where maroon jerseys, maroon pants, maroon helmets, gold numerals and trim. Across the way, the Bulldogs of Berwick, and they're traveling white jerseys, white pants, white helmets, blue numerals and trim. 
Captain's about to meet at the center of the field for the coin toss. 47th meeting. First came back in 1967. It's been a continuous series since 1985. Berwick has the edge in this one. 29 wins for the Bulldogs, 16 for the Spartans, and one tie. Berwick has won the last four, including a tough one last year right here, 21-14. Bulldogs came from 14 down at the half to win that game. They got a short touchdown pass right before the end of the half from Matt Monzinski to Spencer Kishbaugh, and that really gave Berwick some life going in at halftime, and they came out and shut down the Spartans in the second half for that win. Wyoming Valley West... Uh, not in a good spot right now. They were three and eight a year ago, uh, and they are zero and five coming in, into this one. As the referee indicating that Berwick won the toss, deferred to the second half. So we'll get a look at Wyoming Valley West, and we'll see what they have up Ted Jackson Jr.'s sleeve <laughs> as far as their uh, offensive scheme in this one. They'll be going against a Berwick defense that lines up the front four. At Alex Hacker and Rowan Slabinski at the ends. Harrison Snyder and Liam Carroll at the tackles. The linebackers, Spencer Kishbaugh, Tristan English, and Braylon Hawkins. The corners, Ryan Bankus and Billy Hansen. The safeties, Dre Wilk and Bo Sheptak. So Berwick to kick it off. Luke Peters in his first year as the place kicker for the Bulldogs. Junior's done a good job. He's also a soccer player. 18 for 20 and point after touchdowns as Devin Suda deep for the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West. Tyler Mattis, who we'll see at running back, is back there as well. Wyoming Valley West will be moving from our left to our right as we view things here in the first half. So, So Berwick will kick it off. Luke Peters, left-footed kicker, will do the honors for the Bulldogs. Berwick tried to equal their season's record at 3-3, three and three, going into that gauntlet of four games against powerhouses to close out the season. Peters has his uh, signal from the officiating crew, and this game is underway. Kick very, very high. Suda at the 10-yard line up the middle, 15 to the 20, and cut down the 25-yard line. Nice tackle in the open field. Really Suda on the return, and Braylon Hawkins on the tackle for the Bulldogs. So, tackle Wyoming Valley West 15, will put it in play. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now, we gave you Hawkins as a starting linebacker, but he came off after that tackle on special teams. So we'll check who lines up in, in his spot. Looks like it's going to be Jimmy DeAndrea. First and 10 for the Spartans. Suda, who returned that kick, is wide to the left. Slot to the right side. Zanzevich under center. Riggs is the running back behind him. Man in motion right to left. That's Wells. The call goes straight ahead to Madison. He's going nowhere. Maybe a yard to the 26-yard line. Berwick's been pretty stout against the run, and they were there on that first play. Yeah, they just tried a, a simple dive. They cross-blocked with the end and the tackle, trying to create a hole there. Uh, but the linebackers came in really quick, quickly and, and took care of the, the running back. Tristan English on that stop. He's been terrific at that middle linebacker position. Number three on the team in tackles coming in. Second and nine for the Spartans at their own 26. Three receivers to the left. Zanzevich awaits the shotgun snap, and he has it, and he gives to Riggs. Riggs tries the left side. Nothing doing. Maybe another yard to the 27-yard line. Yeah, the, the defensive oh, line of Berwick is getting off the ball, getting penetration right away, and then actually creating some uh, some lanes for the linebackers to fill. Yeah, so from early early uh, views right now, Jim, it's going to be a tough night for Wyoming Valley West. Third down and nine. No gain on that last play. Sean Reed is the wide receiver to the left, that tall receiver. Makai Wells is wide to the right. Carmine Martz is in at a corner for Berwick. He has the tall assignment. Senzevich 
Awaits the snap. He's back to throw. He steps up into it. He's going to run with the football, and he's wrapped up by Spencer Kishbaugh at the 31-yard line, well short of the first down. Punt team on for the Spartans. It looked like it may have been a designed quarterback draw there because he he dropped back, but he really didn't look for any receivers. He was just looking to see what hole opened up, and then he took off trying to get the uh, rushing first down. Kamau Ingram, a sophomore, back to punt for the Spartans. Tyler Ruddy does their long snapping. Drew Wilk back in single safety for the Bulldogs. Kamau back at his own 18-yard line. Ruddy with a good snap. Kick is away. Wilk will see it bounce at the 35. Runs up, gets it, gets by one man, tries to get outside and tripped up at the 35-yard line. Drew Wilk looked like he was going to let it roll. And at the last moment, he came up and made the play and got about seven or eight more yards out of it. Yeah, it was kind of nice. He was watching, seeing how the ball was going to bounce, seeing how the defenders were coming down. The defender slowed down. He took advantage of that and took off for an extra few yards. Spartan defense at 3-4. John McLaughlin, Carter Isbell, Jason Pierce in the front three. Outside linebackers, Javon Gamble and Sean Reed. Inside, Logan Dwyer and Jake Dubaskis. Corners are Ty Makaravich and Tyler Mattis. The safeties, Paul Riggs and Devin Suda. First and ten, Berwick at their own 35-yard line. Bulldogs move from our right to our left here in the opening quarter. Four receivers out to the right. And a quick out to one of them. And over the 40 to the 45 down the far sideline is Spencer Kishbaugh into Spartan territory. He was one of four receivers out there. The quick out from the quarterback and the other three did the blocking nicely done yeah it looked like something out of the playbook we saw last week that Wilkes-Barre area was running where they would take out three or four receivers out there and kind of run a little bit of a screen 19 yards on the reception to Spencer Kishbaugh first and 10 Berwick at the Wyoming Valley West 46 yard line Dre Wilk wide to the left wide to the right is Kishbaugh I formation. The call goes to the tailback. Bo Sheptock off the right side. He has some nice running room. Gets inside the 40. Knocked out of bounds in Berwick territory, about the 39. Good first down and carry two, for Sheptock, the leading rusher on this team. Yeah, it was a nice, it was just basically a, a lead to the right. Uh, Slabinski came down off of his uh, end position, made a nice seal block, and allowed uh, Bo to get around the end and uh, get that extra yardage. Second down and four. Berwick. And now it is Dre Wilk out of the Wildcat. Awaiting the snap from the 40 on the second down. He takes it, looks for some room, has it. The 35, the first down and then some. Breaks it outside, inside the 30, to the 25, down the sideline. And Dre Wilk is hit for a Berwick touchdown. Breaking tackles along the way. He goes 40 yards to the score. Yeah. It was, like you said, he was out there in the Wildcat. He took one step to the right, saw an opening, cut through there, then cut to the outside, broke a couple nice tackles, and made it all the way down. So Dre Wilk, who's had a terrific senior season with another rushing touchdown. It's his fourth of the season. Was averaging over 30 yards. A rush into that and added to it as Luke Peters' extra point kick is up and the kick is good. Time out of the field. 8.53 to go first quarter. Berwick 7. Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Digging deeper to make ends meet? Now you can get a 26% tax credit with a geothermal heat pump system from Climate Master. Climate Master geothermal systems tap the constant temperature of the earth to provide heating, cooling, and hot water while keeping your home comfortable all year long. And Climate Master systems are so efficient, you'll save up to 70% on your energy bill. The investment in a Climate Master system quickly pays for itself. Contact your local Climate Master dealer, Robert G. Dent Heating and Air Conditioning in Light Street. Go to robertgdentheating-ac.com. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Great start for the Bulldogs. Their first possession, just three plays, 65 yards in the last 40, traversed by Dre Wilk out of the Wildcat. One of the keys of the game that I talked about is Wyoming Valley West having to be able to stop that big play potential of Berwick, and obviously uh, Berwick was able to capitalize on that big play. Luke Peters will kick it off for the Bulldogs following his extra point. His kick very high to the far side. Mattis will field at the 12 to the 15 to the 20. Gets outside right, 
kind of drag down there. Maybe a face mask coming. He's brought down at the 26. Jimmy DeAndrea made the tackle in the open field. A flag flew at the point of the tackle. Yeah, good coverage, uh, good hustle down there, but uh, just sometimes hands get in place, places where they shouldn't be. So the mark off against DeAndrea will be just the five-yard variety. And it'll set the Spartans up at their 31-yard line for their second possession of this game. 8.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Berwick with the early 7-0 lead. Which, again, Berwick uh, needs to dominate this defensive line, keep that running game of uh, Wiley West in check, and then hopefully get some interceptions if they start throwing the ball. Sedzevich out of the gun as a running back to his left. Slot to either side. Zedzevich, play action, fires a dangerous pass out to the right. It's caught for a loss of four back to the 27-yard line. But Berwick had a defender all over the play. The pass floated out there and had to be caught because it would have been a fumble. The yeah, back like pass. It might have been Drew Wilk on that, and, and he may have almost picked that off. That was Suda who made the catch. But they mark it back at the 26, so it's a catch for minus five. And second down and 15 for the Spartans at their 26. That yeah, was a close one. They wrestled it out, but obviously if it's a tie, the offensive ball player gets the ball. Riggs is the tailback in the eye. Call goes to Paul Riggs trying the left side. He'll get to about the 29-yard line, and that's about it. Berwick's been very tough against the run in the early going. Of course, Wyoming Valley West playing well, without their star. The Isaiah Cobb. DeAndrea, 33. To call Cobb a workhorse from last season would be a vast understatement. <laughs> in one game, he carried it 53 times, which is just four short of the state record. But he is not available tonight. Injured in the last game against Dallas. Here's a third and 11. Zenzevich back to throw, looking, looking. Throws it long downfield, incomplete. Intended for that tall target. Makai Wells, good coverage, would have been, had to have been a perfect pass. And they had good pass protection there, although Berwick was pushing it, uh, getting closer to the quarterback. A couple of Berwick defenders down. almost had their hands on the quarterback, but he was able to get it off. Fourth down punting situation. That was Carmine Martz on a nice coverage on Wells. So, Wyoming well, Valley West in a putting situation again. Kamal Ingram standing back at his own 18-yard line, awaiting the snap of Tyler Ruddy. Drew Wilk back in single safety for the Bulldogs. Good snap by Ruddy. Kamal left foots it away. Bounces at the 40. Wilk will let this one go, and it rolls dead at the Berwick 38-yard line. So the Bulldogs have it for the second time in this opening quarter. A quarter that has 7-16 remaining, and Berwick leads this one by a score of 7 to nothing. Good job. And obviously, Berwick has established himself both offensively and defensive in that line of scrimmage. Uh, I could see, again, they'll be uh, pretty coming out here looking to try to uh, exploit the missing holes of the defense. You know, we saw Cobb in the middle. Uh, you know, he was a good linebacker as well as a good running back. So see how the Bulldogs play it on their second possession. Center Liam Carroll over the football at the Berwick 38. As officials step in, pointing to the clocks. And we'll see... What they have going here is uh, Ryan Bankus. Looks like he'll be the running back on this series for the Bulldogs. At least the first snap as they have a slot to the right side. Lonzinski out of the gun. There's nobody covering the slot, man. Nobody. Nobody. Lonzinski, a quick out to that slot, man. It's Bo Sheptock, and he's over the 40 to the 45 and has the first down. And flags fly on the sideline. So the quick out to Sheptock. As Al said, he was in the slot, and he was lonesome out there. There was no one covering him. Yeah, he had a good good 10-yard buffer there. They're worried about his speed, Jim. They mark it at the 47. That's a 9-yard pickup. Maybe some yardage tacked on, and that is going to be the case. 15 on the Spartans. 
We didn't get the indication yet. Probably have personal fouls on that far sideline. That is the case. And it will give Berwick a first down at the Spartan 39-yard line. Yeah. Nice uh, pitch and catch, if you want to call it that, because it was wide open and took advantage of that. Spencer Kishball wide left, Sheptock in his slot to the side, Dre Wilk wide right. Well, those are some really good playmakers for the Bulldogs. Matt Linsinski set to get the shotgun snap. Referee steps in, has something to say to him, and now we're ready to go. Linsinski from the gun, and flag down. Officials a little offsides too much on, involved in this early going. It's offsides on Valley West. Must have lined up offside. So there was no movement that I saw. No. So first and five, Berwick. They're getting yardage the easy way on this second possession as they try to add to their 7 nothing lead. Yeah, Berwick obviously will take advantage of that. Uh, they've been very successful. All positive yardage. Uh, Nothing less than five or six yards at each play, so if that continues, it'll be a, a nice night for the Bulldogs. Slot to the left, Dre Wilk wide right. Matt Lonsinski out of the gun, has the snap, back to throw, looking for Wilk one-on-one, -on -one in the end zone, makes the grab and gets hit for the touchdown. Defender was there, but he looked up and just kind of stopped in the pass on yeah, target. Dre Wilk touchdown. off to a great Another start, seven, 34 Wilk. yards on this touchdown. It was great. It was just a fly pattern straight down the, the sideline. Uh, it was a very good pattern. He threw it up. Lonzitski got it up, got a lot of air into the ball. And as you stated, defender just kind of stopped about the five-yard line and looked at the ball. And Wilk just went right by him, got the ball, and walked into the end zone. Yeah, that defender was step for step about the 15-yard uh, line, then kind of uh, stopped and looked up as Luke Peters' extra point attempt is blocked. The so the extra point, point attempt fails. Time on the field. 7.04 to go. First quarter. Berwick 13. Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident. Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Berwick very economical with their first two possessions. A three-play drive for a touchdown. A two-play drive for a touchdown. Dre Wilk has both scores. It's a 13-0 Berwick advantage. 7:04 remaining in this opening quarter. And Wilk showing his speed there, obviously on the 40-yard run and now on the 34-yard pass play. And that was something that Ali West coach was worried about was Berwick's team speed. Luke Peters will kick it off for the Bulldogs. Had that last extra point attempt blocked. Only the third time he has failed on an extra point attempt this season. He's kicked very, very high. Suda at the 8-yard line. Muffs the ball. Picks it up at the 15. Tries to get outside left and is knocked down at the 24-yard line. So that's where they'll put it in play. Ryan Bank is down to make the play Suda for the, the Bulldogs. And Bombing Valley West. Looking for their initial first first down of the game. Will take over their third possession. This one starts at their 24. Yeah, Berwick is obviously hustling down there. First, a little more experience. You can see that on the field. They're a little bit bigger, quicker, and they're they're utilizing that to their advantage early in this game. Spartans moving from our left to our right this opening period. As Zenzevich under center. Duboskis is the fullback. It's an offset eye. Looks like Mattis the running back for this series. From the 24, Mattis goes in motion and a flag down. Had a lot of those early. And for the second time, we have it before the play even really gets going. It's a legal procedure against Wyoming Valley West. That'll make it first and 15 for them back at their 19-yard line. I think it was just the way that Mattis went into motion. He almost made it look like he was running into the line and then cutting back, and I think the official used that as a procedure. He tries it again. This time he stops, starts again, going to the right. 
then comes around, takes the hand off, and gets a little bit of running room out to the 23-yard line. Tyler Mattis did a, a lot of running on that play in every direction. Picked up four, second down and 11. And Drew Will came in from his secondary position to make that tackle. He, he could see him shadowing the, the player, running Mattis running the ball, and was able to get there and, and, and cut him off before he had any great yardage. Tyler Mattis is a sophomore, 5'11", 165 pounds. Has uh, had some good yardage this season, averaging over 12 yards a carry on 11 coming into this game. Here's a second down call coming. Riggs has replaced him in the backfield. Senzevich gives to Riggs, tries the left side, and nothing doing. Nothing doing. Alex Hacker was there. Harrison Snyder was there. Yeah, you could just see the dominance right now of the Berwick Ball line. I mean, on, on the snap of the ball, they already had the Wyoming Valley West players a yard deep into the backfield, and then they just just finished it off by just getting it uh, running back in the backfield. Loss of three. Third down and 14. Again, this is a Berwick team that can really get after the passer. We'll see if Alex Hacker can tee off from his defensive end position. He leads the team in sacks. High snap. Here comes the rush. The sack back at the 15-yard line. Looked like Spencer Kishbaugh made the first contact on Lucas Sanzevich. Yeah, they called for a blitz. So both uh, outside backers, blitz from their positions, came in. And the quarterback stepped up. Luckily, uh, one of the Berwick players were injured because they did run into each other but had enough force to make the tackle. Third and 19. And again, uh, Kamal Ingram. Been very busy Ingram punting the football in this first quarter. He's back about the Spartan three-yard line. Dre Wilk back in single safety for the Bulldogs. Ingram awaits the long snap from Tyler Ruddy. Good snap. Kick is away. Low line drive takes a good artificial turf roll for the Spartans. And will go dead at the Berwick 43-yard line. So that's where the Bulldogs will put it in play for their third possession. They've been perfect so far. Scoring on both possessions and doing it in quick fashion. Three plays and two plays. Of course, that last touchdown was aided by a couple of penalties against the Spartans. Well, Berks has has had great starting position on all their drives, uh, choosing to kick off uh, and allowing the Spartans to have the ball on offense first and enforcing the three punts. The Berk, you know, has been 35 yards plus on all their drives, so it's great position. 4.48 to go, opening quarter. Berwick with the football, Berwick with the lead. And Ethan Lear comes in to take a snap from shotgun. Trips to the right. Lear gives the ball to Bankus. Some running room off the left. Ryan Bankus' first carry is a successful one as he gets out near the 48-yard line. It was a nice, uh, just a little bit of a, a lead to the left-hand side. Leading the white block, he was number 64, Chase Shucker. Did a nice job kicking out the defensive tackle for Valley West, and, and Bank has just followed him up through the hole. So Ethan Lear getting some early snaps at quarterback, six foot, 151-pound junior. Has had a couple of receptions, a couple of rushes, and he threw a touchdown pass at Abington Heights. Second and five, Bulldogs from their 48 Trips to the right side. Lear keeps the football up the middle. It's open season. 40, 35, 30, 20 down to the 15-yard line. Ethan Lear faked to Ryan Bankus. Wyoming Valley West went for that fake big time. And the middle of the field opened up for Ethan Lear. A long run, the longest of his career, down to the 15-yard line. It was a great play, I just said. Uh, the fake was fantastic. He held the ball in the gut of the running back, Bankus, as long as he could. He saw the linebackers leaving to play the running back. He took the ball, went right up. There was nobody in the middle. And actually, the safety was surprised to see the man uh, running up the field. 37 yards on the carry from the 15. Bankus gets the call. Starts outside, then cuts it inside. This time, the Spartans are there. And just a yard for Ryan Bankus. Be second down and nine. This is not an injury situation with uh, Matt Lonsinski. They're just giving uh, Lear some first quarter snaps, and he's looked pretty good so far. Yeah, so far, good ball handling skills, great deception there, and, and uh, fairly decent speed there. Second down and eight. Berwick at the Spartan 13. 
3.14 to go in this opening quarter. Bulldogs trying to add to their lead. Bo Sheptock to the right. Dre Wilk to the left. Sheptock comes in motion, takes the handoff, tries to sweep the left side, gets to the 10, makes a nice cut, and then is down about the 8-yard line. Picks up about 5 on the play. Third down call coming for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it was just a, a sprint sweep. Like you said, he came in motion, handed off by the quarterback, had a couple of lead blockers, got to the outside. Just kind of ran out of real estate there on the uh, sideline. Third down and three. Berwick threatening at the Wyoming Valley West 13-yard line with 2.34 to go in this opening quarter. Lear tried it to the sideline. Got the play. Eight-yard line. Rowan Slabinski will be the tight end on the right. Lear out of the gun on third and three. Has the snap, fakes handoff, keeps the football, and Lear gets hit for a touchdown. Ethan Lear with some good ball handling goes in from eight yards out for the score. Again, once uh, another predetermined play, a fake for the running back uh, running to the right. Linebackers clear out. Slobinski came down, picked up the other outside linebacker on almost like a lead for the quarterback, and went into the end zone untouched. So Berwick remains perfect. Three possessions, three scores. Now they might go for two here to make up for the extra point that was blocked. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. So Lozinski, or you know, I'm sorry, Lear has really established himself as a running quarterback. It'll be nice to see what he can do throwing the ball. Lozinski is in there for the two-point conversion. He's under center. Play action back to throw. Has a man in the end zone. It's Spencer Kishball for the two points. Lozinski to Kishball for two. Top of the field, 2.13 remaining, opening quarter. Berwick, 21, Wyoming Valley West, nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Pop Radio. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faves, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling insurance and pre-finance funerals mayo funeral homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services mayo funeral homes perfection in every detail this is Berg football coach mike bennett you're listening to bulldogs football on pop radio berwick went to junior ethan lear to run the quarterback controls on their third possession and he did quite well five plays 57 yards capped it off with an eight yard touchdown run he had the biggest play along the way, a 37-yard run. And the Bulldogs, three possessions, three scores, a 21-0 lead, 2.13 to go, opening quarter. As Peters' kickoff will be fielded by Mattis back at the 9-yard line. To the 15, to the 20, over the 25, where he's down there. So the Spartans will get the football, still looking for their first down, complete domination by Berwick so far in this game. By number four, English. Ethan Lear looked really, really good. Handled the ball well. Of course, we didn't see him put it in the air. You know, as this score builds, if you're going to throw it all, you're probably going to do that early, early on. on. <laughs> exactly. But it, I, I'm very impressed with his ball handling skills, uh, his, his line of sight as far as the uh, field is concerned. Uh, obviously, a lot of those plays were pretty determined, but also knowing where to run, and, and he got there fairly quickly. He could move. And that is his second touchdown of the season. He had an interception return for a score at Abington Heights. Now here are the Spartans of Wyoming Valley West at their own 27-yard line. In I formation, Paul Riggs is the tailback in the eye. And movement on the left side of their offensive line. That'll make things a little tougher for them. It'll be first and 15 back at their 22. That's 30 yards for them already here in the first quarter. Uh, what? A lot of young players in there, as, a, as their coach said, so a little jitters, maybe. Here is a first and 15 for the Spartans. Sanzevich under center. After a shift, Riggs is the tailback in the eye. Toss, sweep, left side, Paul Riggs. He gets nowhere. Will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down about the 19, a loss of three. Second down and 
18 coming for the Spartans. Yeah, again, the defensive end on the right-hand side, there's Lubinsky. He just, he just had a good push on the, on the offensive band, created a little bit of a prop for running back. And then when you have the linebackers filling on top of that, they had really had nowhere to go. And yeah, Slobinski played almost exclusively uh, offense early in the season, but he has established himself now as a very, very good defensive end. Yeah, definitely. Second and long, Spartans. Sanzevich fires, has his man Riggs, has some running room, gets over the 30 and out to the 37-yard line. Nicely done. Spencer Kishbaugh makes the stop. A little dump off to Paul Riggs. And the first offense of the game for the Spartans. Out to the 38-yard line. That's 19 yards on the pass to Riggs. It was just uh, they cleared out. It had a weird formation there. They brought him out of motion, and Riggs just kind of delayed. It was almost like a screen pass, but beyond the line of scrimmage. Dumped it to him. There was nobody there, and he, he got a good head of steam. Plus, he's a running back. He knew what to do. What he, he got a lot of yardage. First and 10. Wyoming Valley West at their own 38-yard line. Dwyer is in as a blocking back to the left. Suda goes in motion to the left. Zenzevich gives the ball to Riggs, tries the left side, and going nowhere. Someone got him by the legs right away. That yeah, was our uh, Berg's uh, defensive tackle, carry. number 78, Liam Carroll. Carroll, also the starting center for the Bulldogs, makes a defensive play there. Carroll, Second and ten. For the dogs. Spartans at their own 38. Perhaps the final play of this opening quarter coming up. So all the skilled people look to the... Sideline for the play call. Three receivers to the right. Lucas Sanzevich awaits the shotgun snap. Has it. Fakes handoff. Keeps the football and is buried at the 35-yard line. Berwick is really winning that line of scrimmage. That was Harrison Snyder in on that play. Zanzevich Loss of three. And it will be... Third down and 13 on the tackle. when the second quarter begins. One of the books here at Spartan Stadium, Berwick 21, Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening quarter, to Bulldogs Berwick football on top radio. As a community bank, First Columbia Bank and Trust knows the value of helping our young people dream, excel, and reach their goals. For more than 120 years, First Columbia has been committed to helping our communities prosper and our youth succeed. We're proud to invest in our youth through athletics, the arts, and education. First Columbia Bank and Trust, with you and your children every step of the way. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. This is Bird Football Coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. One quarter of the books here at Spartan Stadium in Kingston has been all throwing to this point. They lead Wyoming Valley West by a score of 21 nothing. They have scored on all three of their possessions. We'll start the second quarter with the Spartans in possession at their own 35-yard line. So they'll move from our right to our left. And... They face a third and 13. Just got a score up here. Uh, Dallas over Hazelton area. 21 nothing in the opening half. Wait, Dallas has something going. They are undefeated. Of course, so is Hazelton coming into this one. That game played at Harmon Guy Stadium at Hazelton tonight. Dallas will be at Crespin Field next Friday. Here's a third and 13 to start this second quarter. Lucas Sanzevich under center. Suter in motion to the right. Sanzevich back to throw. Big pass rush. Gets the pass away. Incomplete. He was hit and dropped as he got the pass away. Intended for Dabowskis. Rowan Slobinski had a, a, a lot of pressure on him, as well as Alex Hacker. They, they coming from their end positions, they just uh, had a lot of pressure on him. Feeling kind of bad for the Valley West quarterback. He's taken a beating so far in his first half. Yeah, they're going to have to look to him. He's coming off very, very slowly. As Trey Wilk anticipates the punt from Kamau Ingram. Ingram standing back of the Spartan 22-yard line. Tyler Ruddy's snap is a good one. Kick is a low-line drive. Wilk at the 33-yard line of Berwick. 
to the outside, the 40. The 45 over midfield, to the 45 down the sideline. Still on his feet and finally ridden out of bounds inside the 30-yard line of Wyoming Valley West. So a terrific return by Dre Wilk. And the Bulldogs in business for their first possession of this second quarter. They lead 21-0. Yeah, the Bulldogs said to return up on their side of the field. They had a nice wall there set for them. The key was that Wilk was, had enough speed to outrun one of the Valley West players. But there is a flag on a penalty. So some of the return by Dre Wilk will be coming back. In fact, looks like a lot of it. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah, well, they were setting up that wall, and, you know, sometimes you have those linemen running by, and they reach out just to slow somebody down and, and pick up the holding penalty. Wow, they're still going. Yeah, it's going to come back to almost to where he caught the ball. Yeah, actually a yard behind that. I just don't understand how the hole could have been that far downfield. I didn't see anyone no. there except Dre Wilk. Yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, the Bulldogs will have it at their own 32-yard line. First and ten, they move from our left to our right as we view things here in the second quarter. They have scored on all three possessions. Ethan Lear was the quarterback on the last possession. Matt Lanzinski back in there for this one. Three receivers to the right. Call goes to Bankus. He flips the ball to Sheptock coming around at the 35, the 40, the 45 to midfield. Bo Sheptock in a foot race to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and spun down about the two-yard line. Makai Wells did not give up on it, kept going, and kept Sheptock out of the end zone. It was a nice uh, double reverse there. Lanzinski tossed it. First running back, one back, brought it back to Sheptock. Lanzinski then made a great ceiling block to get him back out into the uh, secondary. And the, he just weaved his way through the Valley West secondary and outran a few of their players. 65 yards on the carry by Bo Sheptog. And Berwick with the ball. 65 yard run. At the Wyoming Valley West three yard line. I formation. Caden Hunt is the fullback. The give is to Sheptog off the left side, dives for the end zone, and gets in for the score. Bo Sheptock in from three yards out. Touchdown. It was just a simple lead, fullback leading through the hole with Berwick's large lineman there pushing Wally West off. It wasn't much of a, uh, a an effort, although somebody did sneak in there and get him right about the one-yard line, so he did have to fight to the end zone. Well, he earned that with yep. that 65-yard run that set it up. Sophomore Bo Sheptock finishes it with a three-yard run. And now Luke Peters will attempt the extra point. Snap, placement, kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out in the field. 11-18 to go, opening half. Berwick, 28, Wyoming Valley West, nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. When you're planning your next big event, weddings, concerts, church festivals, even construction sites, remember Preferred Portables has you covered. Preferred Portables offers a luxury restroom trailer that even has hot water. Have no power? No problem. They can provide a generator to keep the lights on. Preferred Portables can provide sanitary service to campgrounds, carnivals, parks, parties, and even has an emergency service 24 hours a day. Contact Preferred Portables to learn about events and contractor pricing. Email preferredportables at gmail.com. Go Burrick Bulldogs! This is Bird Football Coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Berwick remains perfect. They've scored on all four possessions in this opening half. They lead Wyoming Valley West by a score of 28-0. Luke Peters, following his extra point, will kick it off. Bo Sheptock with the latest score for the Bulldogs. 65-yard run, followed by a three-yard touchdown run as this kick Goes to the far side. Suda at the 10. Devin Suda to the 20 and tripped up as he looked like he had a head of steam. The 28-yard line. Nice play by Tristan English making the stop as the Spartans will put it in play. They have really struggled on both sides of the football. Berwick dominating to this point. Bulldogs try to even their record at 3-3. Spartans at their own 29. It was a, it was a nice return, actually, from the 10, uh, and Tristan made a nice open field tackle. They would have got a lot more yardage on that return. 21-6 now is the Dallas lead over Hazleton area in the first half of that game at Harmon Guy Stadium tonight. Lucas Zanzevich 
shaken up a bit in that last series, but he's under center now. Mattis is the running back. He gets the call and is tripped up. Berwick getting really good penetration. Great penetration. Actually, none of the Berwick uh, defenders tackled them, but they had such penetration. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Penetration. They submarined the offensive line, and he actually tripped over one of his own men and fell. The ball at the 28, so a loss of a yard. Second down and 11 for the Spartans. Slot to the left side. Wide receiver right. Senzevich will operate out of the gun, but the Spartans use the timeout. 10.36 to go, opening half. Berwick 28, Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening to Berwick Football and Pop Radio. Has a sports injury got you down? No one knows sports medicine like Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute. Their unrivaled sports team has the highest orthopedic success rates in the region. With more than 30 years of experience, they put athletes first and provide same-day appointments. Don't let a sports injury slow you down. Learn more at lvhn.org slash ortho or call 833-LV-ORTHO. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Jim Doyle along with Dr. Alan Lonaconis from Spartan Stadium in Kingston. We have 10.36 to go in the opening half. Berwick leading Wyoming Valley West 28-0. Spartans following their timeout. Second down at 11 from their own 28-yard line. Three receivers to the left. Lucas Anzevich has the snap. Big pass rush. He will get the pass away. It goes right in the hands of Rowan Slavinsky, who will walk in from 15 yards out for the touchdown. Anzevich tried to avoid the sack. The ball goes right to Slavinsky, and Berwick builds the lead. Zanzevich shaking up on the play. Yeah, Berwick had. It looks like they were trying to set up a screen pass, but Berwick came flying in so hard. Uh, that the, the quarterback actually couldn't see his receiver. He got hit right when he was throwing it. Slobinski was in the right place at the right time. It was just an easy catch and, and walk into the end zone. And I remember Wyoming Valley West already down there. Player that was supposed to be their starting quarterback this season, Luke Buss. He was the starter a year ago. He is injured out for the season. Never really started the season for this team. And Savage has been doing his best, but it is tough. And, you know, normally, Al, you set up a screen or draw or something like that. That's to avoid the rush, but it didn't do anything to that rush. It no. still came hard, and he uh, barely got it away, and it fluttered right into the arms of Rowan Slabinski, who took it the last 15 yards for the touchdown. Rowan's second touchdown of the season. His first was as a receiver. So yeah. Berwick builds the lead as they tend to Zanzevich about the 15-yard line. Yeah, Berwick, again, you know, we can stress the fact that they're controlling that line of scrimmage, and, and they just teed off. They knew it was a long third down play. They figured a pass play coming, uh, and that's a tough situation for any quarterback, you know, whether it's high school, college, or pros, when that defensive line is teeing off and they're coming, and they came quickly. And unfortunately, Berwick sighs with their hands up coming in. He really Second couldn't quarter, see his receiver and, and just threw it to an area. And, and unfortunately six. for them, uh, Rowan was standing right there. Carson Brown, a sophomore, is warming up on the sideline for Wyoming Valley West. We'll undoubtedly see him at the quarterback controls. Here's Peter's kick. It's up, and it's good. Time on the field. 10-31 still to go in this opening half. Berwick, 35, Wyoming Valley West, Extra nothing. Good. You're listening to Bulldogs football and pop radio. If you have a child that's interested in gymnastics or if you've been practicing the sport for years, then Axis Gymnastics Academy is where you want to be. Their dedicated coaches will teach you everything you need to know to perform your best, from the basics of flexibility, form, and style to advanced techniques that will improve your rhythm and style during a routine. Call Heidi Rebuck at Axis Gymnastics Academy at 570-441-5969. That's 570-441-5969. Now enrolling for beginner to advanced classes at 917 East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. 10.31 to go, opening half, a half completely dominated by Berwick. They lead this one over Wyoming Valley West 35 to nothing. 
And we'll see a new quarterback on the field for the Spartans as they tend to Lucas Sansevich on the sideline. He has been hit early and often. Yeah, even in that 19-yard completion, uh, was a nice play. He got nailed and was down on the field for a little bit, although all the attention was away on the uh, receiver. Here's Peter's kick, line drive kick. Fielded by Mattis, turns the corner after muffing it, has some running room, and is forced out of bounds over the 30-yard line. Flag down well, well after the play. Hmm. on the return. Not now, sure. maybe the official just saw it and was slow in the holding. getting the flag out. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. I thought I saw holding there, but who knows? Unless there was some activity on the sideline. Referee looking up at us. Now oh, another flag. flag. And that one will be uh, unsportsmanlike against Wyoming Valley West. So we'll have to check what the first one is. Any guesses? <laughs> <laughs> Who it was on? <laughs> no. And there was a holding on the kickoff. And then the unsportsmanlike. All right. So it'll bring the ball back to the 24 yard line. And this is going to be a tough, tough situation for a sophomore quarterback, Carson Brown. No. Yep. Berwick has really been teeing off on the quarterback. Lucas Zedzevich, he is out. Some sort of injury. They tend to him, although he is standing on the sideline. And Carson Brown, 6 foot, 170 pound sophomore, will take the snap for the Spartans at their own 24. Officials are not done talking about this. They threw two flags. Marked them both off. And it's a sideline warning against Wyoming sideline Valley West. So maybe that last flag that we saw was just a sideline warning. Right. So it'll be the Spartans football at their own 24-yard line. 10-24 to go in the half. Carson Brown. Under center, slot to the right side. Brown gives the ball to Riggs, looking for some running room. Nice first down carry. Gets out to the 29-yard line. Spencer Kishbaugh on the tackle. I'll tell you what, when you're a sophomore getting forced into action against a Berwick defense that's been really teeing off, five yards on a first down carry has to make you feel pretty good. Yeah, definitely. It's like, here, you take it and you go. <laughs> I'll watch. Second down and five. Spartans at their own 29-yard line. Yeah, it, was a, it was actually a nice little lead. Uh, they kicked out Slabinski uh, with the tackle. They looped the end around to pick up the inside linebacker, the fullback led, and it was a nice nice play. Mike Fell is in as a defensive tackle for Berwick, 244-pound junior. Rigs the call again, lowers the shoulder, picks up a couple to the 31-yard line. Going to bring up third down and three. Yeah, it was a little kind of counter look. Uh, they faked the handoff to the running back going to the right side. Uh, the other back took a step and came back, back through the hole. There was a little bit of a hole there. Like I said, it picked up uh, three yards. So it's third down and about two for the Spartans at their own 32. As the sophomore quarterback, Carson Brown, looks to the sideline for the play call. Slot to the right. Eye formation. Mattis is the tailback in the eye. Toss sweep to him. Bobbled the ball momentarily. Wrapped up about the line of scrimmage. Did not get the first down. It'll be fourth down and short for Wyoming Valley West. Boy, that penetration is unbelievable. I mean, Brown barely got that pitch off. As soon as the ball got to him from the snap, there was a white jersey on him. Yeah, Slobinski is, is getting great presentation. He's over, he's over, over top of uh, the defensive. I'm uh, sorry, the tackle. He's much larger, stronger, quicker. He's just getting Fourth that kind of pre penetration. Fourth down and three. Come out, low snap, 
fields it on a bounce and gets the kick away in a beauty. And the ball will roll by Wilk and roll all the way down to the Berwick 17-yard line. That is a terrific effort by the Wyoming Valley West punter, Kamau Ingram. A great effort just to get the kick away, and then he boomed it. And they've gotten a defensive touchdown as well. And this will be their worst field position of the game. And it is Ethan Lear in for his second series as the quarterback. Out of the pistol, gives the ball to Ryan Bankus off the right side, has running room, bouncing off tacklers, gets the first down out near the 28. through to, to run once they get out they pass the uh, the line of scrimmage. Ten yards of the carry by Ryan Bank is Berwick has a really good one two punch at that tailback spot with Bo Sheptock and Ryan Bankus. Bank is Relatively safe first pass pass for the the youngster. A little bit slow to play down, or else there was some running room had it been Second right down, on the well. mark. Second down and eleven. Bulldogs back at their twenty-seven yard line. Ethan Lear out of the gun. Wide receivers to either side. Has the snap. Back to throw. Fires. Dangerous pass. Sheptock able to hang on to it at the 21. A defender comes out of there with the ball. Sean Reed, he says, I have it. He doesn't. Officials not agreeing. They mark it at the 23, so that's a completion for a loss of four. And it's third down and 15. For the Bulldogs, they've scored on every possession, but they'll have to come up with a big conversion here to keep that streak alive. Well, Lear's two for two, but unfortunately it's for minus eight or ten yards. Well, let's see if he goes downfield here. He's got Sheptock in a slot to the right, Dre Wilk outside of him, and Spencer Kishball wide to the left. Officials step in, stop play, send Berwick back to their huddle. They're going to talk about something. We are not privy to it. Can't imagine what it would be. So the stoppage was for no apparent reason. Clarification. <laughs> Just clarification. We, we are ready to go. Again, slot to the right, wide receiver left. Lear out of the gun. Third and long. Lear back to throw. Looking long over the middle, has his man Sheptock at the 40. Bo Sheptock, first down at the 41-yard line. Nicely done, Ethan Lear to Bo Sheptock. Third and 15, they pick up 18 in the first down. It was a very nice pattern. They, what they did is they brought two guys down there. They flooded the area. Uh, looked like Kishball went deep, drugged the safety in the corner with him, and Sheptock just came out in behind the linebackers. Uh, Lear is able to just drop the ball in between there for a, a very nice game. Sixth catch of the season for Bo Shemtok. That goes for 18 yards and the first down. Berwick from their own 41. Slot to the left. Caden Hunt is the fullback ahead of Bankus in the eye. Lear runs into Bankus. The ball is loose. Berwick has turned it over. Wilding Valley West has come up with the football. The Spartans will get an opportunity. Javon Gamble on the recovery. Yeah, there was just some miscommunication there between the running back and the quarterback. One turned one way, one turned the other way, and unfortunately ran into each other. Uh, you see that happen a lot of times when you when you see the backfields not working together all the time. 
So first and ten for Wyoming Valley West, their best scoring opportunity of this opening half. They have it at the Berwick 38. They have 434 remaining in the half. And they have two timeouts remaining. Yeah, it might give a little spark to Valley West. I mean, they're playing tough. They're they're definitely outmatched, but they're playing tough. They're hitting hard. They're 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 trying to uh, follow their assignments as as directed by their coaches. Uh, they're doing a good job in that respect. Carson Brown, the sophomore, pressed into duty at the quarterback controls, awaits the shotgun snap. Three receivers to the right for him. He's rolling right. He fires a quick out. He has a man. The completion to Wells. And he gets to the 35-yard line. So they'll pick up about three on the reception. Second down and seven. Yeah, it was just a a quick out. Uh, They brought a blocking back out to block the uh, defender on the receiver. Receiver cut it back inside. And then uh, Tristan... English? English, sorry. I was thinking Wells. (laughs) Uh, Came up and made a nice tackle in the open field. Second and seven. Spartans at the Bulldog 35. Backs at an open set now. Brown under center. Fakes handoff. Keeps the football. Looks for some running room. Hit from behind. Gets uh, to about the 33-yard line. Rowan Slabinski was the tackler from behind. So they'll give him two on the play. And this will be a third down and five coming for the Spartans. Yeah, it's a nice nice little play, safe play. Quarterback just kind of rolling out a little bit. Has a little bit of lead blockers in front of him. Uh, got some running room, but again, Burke's quickness just closed down on it very quickly. All 11 players look to the sideline for the, for the play call. See what they come up with on this third down. Four, of course, with the score being what it is, it's going to be four down territory. They'll talk about this one. Timeout Spartans. Berwick leads 35 nothing. 2.49 to go in the half. You're listening to Berwick Football and Pop Radio. Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independent Sports Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Wyoming Valley West following their timeout, their best scoring opportunity of this opening half. They have it at the Berwick 33-yard line. They're facing a third down and five. Lucas Zanzevic, their starting quarterback, out with an injury. At the controls is a sophomore, Carson Brown. He's under center for this third down call. Berwick showing blitz. Movement both ways. We'll see which way it goes. Kind of looked like the right side of the Valley West offense got a little quick. I tell you, as good as Berwick is getting across that line of scrimmage, getting after the quarterback, I don't blame offensive linemen for <laughs> trying to get a little head start on things. Well, we're discussing it. Who went first? Okay, Mr. Referee. He's talking to the Berwick defense. <laughs> I don't know what about. Well, it's obviously against Berwick because they're going the other way. And that is the at the 27 yard line. Was that enough for a first down? They are moving the sticks, so it is. Yep. First and 10. Wyoming Valley West gets it the easy way. 2.24 to go in the half. They have one timeout remaining. Slot to the right. Berwick showing blitz, and now the Spartans jump across. Yep. Mr. Kishbaugh come flying in there and uh, got the left tackle a little nervous. I don't blame him. (laughs) I'd be nervous, too. (laughs) First and 15 for the Spartans at the Berwick 32-yard line. Stay with us at halftime. Al will have all the stats, and uh, Jake Klein will bring us updated on the High school football scoreboard, including the latest on that battle of unbeatens 
Dallas and Hazelton toss sweep right side. Paul Riggs trying to get outside. He will not get there. Alex Hacker stood his ground, would not let Riggs turn the corner. Then he got some help from some teammates and a loss on the play. Yeah, he just strung out. Again, our Berwick strength and quickness, uh, anything that's going to take long to develop, uh, Berwick has just been able to neutralize. They'll mark the ball at the 37. That's a loss of five on the play. And it'll be second down and 20 for the Spartans at the Bulldog 37. The time becomes a factor with just one timeout left. 106 showing on the clock. Brown, the sophomore out of the gun, has the snap, fires to the sideline, has a completion. It's to Makaravich, and he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. It's a nice tackle in the open field by Bo Sheptock, the safety who leads the Bulldogs in tackles coming into this one. Yeah, that was just a, a, a basically a, a quick pass on the outside. Catch, let the receiver try to do something with it, but uh, Bo was not going to allow him to go anywhere. And now the Spartans will use their final timeout. We'll keep it right here. Spartan It'll be out. third down and 21 after this timeout. Obviously, four down territory with the score being what it is, uh, but a long way to go for that first down. A reminder that uh, Al and I will be at uh, Danny Hill Field in Redmond Stadium. Tomorrow for college football, that uh, will be Bloomsburg University against Westchester. It's the Huskies' only night game of the season. That'll be a 6 o'clock kickoff. You can hear that on our sister station, Bigfoot Country, 106.5. Our coverage will start at 5.30 with the Frank Sheptock Show. And Frank's nephew, Bo, just made a nice play defensively. He's had a couple of... Uh, Great offensive plays this game as well as Berwick leads it 35 nothing. just 36 seconds remaining in this half. No timeouts left for Wyoming Valley West. Three receivers to the right. Paul Riggs, the lone running back. Carson Brown under center. Third and long. Brown gives on an end around and nothing doing. Suter got it. He was tripped up behind the line. Spencer Kishball then finished him off. Good penetration by Rowan Slabinski. Kishball on the tackle, number four. Suter shaken up on the play. They will tend to him with 17 seconds remaining in this first half. Tend to Suter. The way, the way he is uh, sitting there, I hope it's just a cramp. Could be, but... Uh, this has been a Murphy's Law season for uh, Wyoming Valley West. Mm. Anything that could happen has happened in the way of negative things to this team. Uh, Luke Buss, who did an admirable job as quarterback last year, was going to start this season, has missed the entire season with injury. Isaiah Cobb, their outstanding running back who ran for over 1,300 yards last year. Uh, has not uh, played at all tonight, is not in uniform, injury. Nick Giza is an excellent tight end for them. He is not in action with injury. And Lucas Zanzevich was filling in for Buss, injured in this game, so they're on their third quarterback now. Zuda walks to the sideline, Suda, I should say, under his own power. The ball back at the 40-yard line. They'll start the clock. Wyoming Valley West will not hurry. Yeah, they're just to content the to let it. Yeah, they're content to just let it go. So that will be the end of the opening half here at Spartan Stadium in Kingston, with the score: Berwick 35, Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Northeast Pennsylvania, it's your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are First Keystone. Community Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender.
Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident, Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. The home of the Berwick Bulldogs. This is WHLM AM, W282CO Bloomsburg, W234BH West Hazleton, W242CY Berwick, and W288CF Danville. Pop Radio, a Seven Mounds Media radio station. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Air Conditioning sells comfort. Since 1972, S.J. Kowalski understands the importance of doing business locally. They service what they sell and take pride in customer satisfaction. S.J. Kowalski is a trained comfort specialist, a Lennox dealer, and they are Northeastern Pennsylvania's premier dealer of Mitsubishi ductless mini split systems. S.J. Kowalski also sells and installs energy-efficient Renai water heaters and geothermal systems. Call 1-888-KOWALSKI and ask about special promotions and zero-interest financing. When you think of Wagner's trophies and engravables, you may only think of trophies, but we're much, much more than that. We can take care of your wedding gift ideas or gifts for your graduate. T-shirts and commemorative gifts for your company picnic or family reunion. Unique gifts personalized to your every need. So when you think gifts, think of Wagner's trophies and engravables in downtown Bloomsburg. Online at wagnerstrophies.com. This is Bird Football Coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Domination is the word for the opening half where Berwick is concerned. They lead Wyoming Valley West at the break 35 to nothing. As the Bulldogs on their first possession went three plays, 65 yards. Touchdown coming on a 40-yard run by Dre Wilk out of the Wildcat. Luke Peters had the extra point, 8.53 to go in the opening quarter. Berwick led by a score of 7-0. Berwick's next possession, just two plays, 62 yards. Also a couple of penalties against Wyoming Valley West. The touchdown coming on a 34-yard strike from Matt Lanzinski to Dre Wilk. Luke Peters with the extra point. Actually, that extra point attempt was blocked, and Berwick's lead was 13 to nothing. On the Bulldogs' third series... Head coach Mike Bennett went with uh, his junior quarterback, Ethan Lear, and he directed a five-play, 57-yard scoring drive. He capped it with an eight-yard touchdown run. He had the biggest play, a 37-yard run from scrimmage. Matt Lanzinski then came in for the two-point conversion, threw it to Spencer Kishbaugh, and Berwick led after one quarter, 21 to nothing. Very early in the second quarter. Bo Sheptock went in from three yards out to extend the lead. It was just a two-play drive. He had the first play, 65 yards on a double reverse. Luke Peters had the extra point. Berwick led 28 to nothing. They added to that lead with a touchdown from their defensive unit. Berwick's defense getting all over quarterback Lucas Zanzevich. He tried to avoid the sack, got the pass away, went right in the arms of Rowan Slabinski, who ran it in from 15 yards out for the score. Luke Peters kicked the extra point. Berwick had a lead of 35 to nothing. Wyoming Valley West had one opportunity to score in that first half. It came on a Berwick fumble recovered by Javon Gamble of the Spartans at the Bulldog 38. But eventually they lost yardage back to the 40 as time runs out here in the half. At the break, Berwick, 35, Wyoming Valley West, nothing. Stick around. We'll have stats with Al Monacotis. We'll have scores from Jake Klein. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. If you haven't been to name brand liquidations in the Burke Plaza Shopping Center, you're missing out on great values. At name brand liquidations, you'll save money from 50 to 90% on everything imaginable, from furniture to food to bedding, you name it. Name brand liquidations not only sells a huge variety of merchandise, they feature name brands just like their name says at low prices. When you're in the market for anything, shop at the store that has everything. Name brand liquidations. Wishing the Burke Bulldogs a great season. 
Has a sports injury got you down? No one knows sports medicine like Lehigh Valley Orthopedic Institute. Their unrivaled sports team has the highest orthopedic success rates in the region. With more than 30 years of experience, they put athletes first and provide same-day appointments. Don't let a sports injury slow you down. Learn more at lvhn.org slash ortho or call 833-LV-ORTHO. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Chicxinny, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faves, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-finance funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. Digging deeper to make ends meet? Now you can get a 26% tax credit with a geothermal heat pump system from Climate Master. Climate Master geothermal systems tap the constant temperature of the earth to provide heating, cooling, and hot water while keeping your home comfortable all year long. And Climate Master systems are so efficient, you'll save up to 70% on your energy bill. The investment in a Climate Master system quickly pays for itself. Contact your local Climate Master dealer, Robert G. Dent Heating and Air Conditioning in Light Street. Go to robertgdentheating-ac.com. This is Berg Football Coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Pop Radio. Crowd here at Spartan Stadium in Kingston about to be entertained by the Berwick High School Marching Band. It's been easy for the Bulldog football team through one half of play. They lead Wyoming Valley West 35-0. It will likely be the last game that will be easy on Berwick's schedule. Next week, they'll be home against Dallas, a team that uh, was 5-0 and going into their game at Hazleton tonight. Then it's Danville, a team that is 5-0 and going into their game tonight. Then it's Crestwood, a team that was 4-1 and going into their game. And finally, Hazleton area that was undefeated going in. So four teams coming into tonight's action with a combined record of 19-1, and one, a gauntlet facing Berwick after this one tonight. But so far, so good in this one. Berwick leads by a score of 35 nothing. Stats from that opening half, Al Anaconis. Yes, thank you, Jim. Uh, obviously, the Berwick's dominance in the statistical category will be very obvious. Uh, Valley West rushed the ball for 16 times for only 9 yards. They were seven for, they had seven completions for 16 yards for a total of 25 yards offensively. Uh, their biggest plays were on kick returns uh, of 50 yards total. Uh, Carson Brown came in rushing. Uh, he replaced the quarterback. He had one rush for two yards. Paul Riggs rushed the ball seven times for minus three yards. Uh, Tyler Mattis rushed the ball for four times and amassed seven yards for positive. Uh, Devo Sudro had one rush for minus two yards. And uh, the quarterback, Zankiewicz, Zankiewicz uh, rushed the ball three times for minus four yards. So, again, Berwick's defensive line is, is having their way, and their linebackers are picking up anything they can. Passing category, uh, same thing. When Zankiewicz was in there, he was uh, he only had uh, four attempts, actually five attempts. He was five attempts for 14 yards, but he threw one interception before he was injured and was out of ground, out of the game. Uh, Brown came in, had two attempts for four yards. Uh, as far as receiving, uh, Sudra had one reception for minus five yards. McKay Wells had one reception for three yards. Riggs had one reception, the longest gain of the game for them for 19 yards. And McKevich, Ty McKevich, had one reception for uh, one yard. Uh, the Valley West... Uh, team was penalized for a total of 50 yards in the first half. They only had two first downs uh, and no, no punt returns, obviously, because Berwick didn't punt the ball at all in the first half. Uh, for the Berwick Bulldogs, they had a very good half offensively. They rushed the ball for 176 yards, 10 rushes, uh, passing. They had seven completions for 76 yards for a total of 252 first half yards. Uh, in the rushing category, uh, we had Ryan Bankus uh, rush the ball three times for 16 yards. Bo Sheptock had a, a great first half. He rushed the ball four times for 78 yards and one touchdown. And Tyler Royal had obviously one rush for 40 yards, one touchdown. Uh, then we also had uh, Deandra 
had one, no rushes, I'm sorry. And Lear, when he was in there as quarterback, on one rush for 37 yards, another for five yards for a total of 42 yards. So Berwick's rushing game, obviously, it, it came alive uh, in this game. Passing wide, wise, Matt Lanziski. Uh, he had four passes for four completions uh, for a total of 64 yards and one touchdown. Uh, and Lear came in. He had three passes for a total of uh, 12 yards. Uh, he had all three completions, two for negative yardage, but again for 12 yards. In the rushing category, Spencer Kishbaugh ran the ball twice. Uh, or I'm sorry, receiving category, Spencer Kishbaugh received the ball twice for 21 yards. Uh, Bank has had one reception for minus two. Drew Wilk had two receptions for 63 yards, including a, a touchdown. Uh, Bo Sheptak had three receptions for 24 yards. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Berwick's passing was, was right on track tonight. Uh, Berwick, uh, I had him for six touchdowns, first downs. Uh, they had one fumble, uh, which they lost to Wyoming Valley West. Uh, they had 22 yards in kick returns, one 12-yard punt return. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Peters obviously had the uh, three PATs, uh, or he was three for four, I should say, on the PATs after. So, Al, I'm a little upset with you. Hi. You talked over Danny Boy. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> <There's>, Jim. <laughs> I know you're new to this because there's, there's two things you don't talk over: the national anthem or Danny Boy. Danny Boy. <laughs> and the Berwick band. I'll put just, that in, in my notes. <laughs> Berwick band just did a wonderful rendition. You know, if I might bet, I, I feel very good about that half. Obviously, you're a superior team. You have the, the big lead, but with the exception of a penalty or two, and the one. Uh, mistake on the fumble. Berwick played very, very well. They, very, they did very well. Like you said, uh, they only had three penalties for 25 yards. Uh, that's a kind of a, you know half you'd like to see out of your players. Uh, the fumble, obviously, Lear getting uh, you know involved in the game, a little you know new, just a, a, a mistake as far as which way to turn in there. But overall, I mean, they they represent themselves very well tonight. Uh, a type of game you want to see going into this stretch that you pointed out with some tough teams coming up. You want to see them coming off sharp, you know, hitting their keys where they should be, doing the things they want to do. Uh, obviously, their defense looks really tough tonight. They're quick, they're strong, all right, they're, they're manhandling the, the Valley West line of scrimmage. So uh, uh, Coach Bennett should, should be very happy with their performance tonight. 35 nothing is the Berwick lead. We'll check other scores when we return. You are listening to Bulldogs football and pop radio. One, three, nine. Lloyd's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick. The roofing experts for all of our listening area. With over 30 years experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your roofing, decks, and siding. Specializing in metal roofs, rubber roofs, and shingles. Most of the work is done in one day. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Now located in Dushore and also serving Bradford and Sullivan counties with owner Harry Titus, a supporter of the Berwick football team and St. Jude Children's Hospital. Call 570-752-4351. Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency. 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne Counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. It won't be long before tax time rolls around, so remember to visit Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting for your income tax needs. ND Accounting and Consulting handles both business and individual taxes, as well as offering a variety of accounting services, including payroll, auditing, and bookkeeping. For tax and accounting services, look for Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting with two locations, 214 Pine Street in Berwick and 5929 Main Road in Sweet Valley. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. 
Both teams have made their appearance out in the field. We're just a couple of minutes away from the kickoff to start the second half. Berwick dominating Wyoming Valley West by a score of 35 nothing. For an update on other scores, let's go back to the studios of Pop Radio and Jake Klein. standpoint a lead like this you've got a gauntlet of big games coming up do you allow the uh, marching band special first string a series I mean there's different philosophies on that some you just empty the bench for the whole second half others like to give that first team one series before they come out I guess there's no right or wrong to it no and, and again you're already you know midway through the season uh, Berwick has been has been in games where they had to play the first string most of the game so conditioning wise it should be in game shape that way but I know Coach Bennett still wants to work on a few things offensively, you know, switching in his quarterbacks, night, trying to 14th. get, you know, some feels, some looks for them. So I, I would see them probably coming with their first string here on the kickoff. They'll be receiving, game you know, change, run that through, uh, get them some more reps through here. And then I, I would think after Saturday, that, especially if they score, uh, after that you'll see noon. some more reserves coming in. But it's, it's you know, we see, you know, a game like this, you don't want to see somebody get hurt, you know. Uh, it's just one of those things, you know, as you as you want to get the team moving again, feeling good about what they're doing, but at the same token, you know, give those younger guys some, some uh, reps in a varsity game. We mentioned there were very few uh, negatives to that uh, opening half. Uh, one we saw uh, as the teams came off the field was uh, an injury to Alex Hacker. We didn't see it when it happened. But uh, he was walking off with a noticeable limp and the trainer by his side. We believe that was he that came out with, with no pads on to start this second half. So hopefully that's nothing serious because with that uh, gauntlet of teams facing Berwick in the last four weeks of the season, they will need a uh, fully healthy Alex Hacker in his defensive end position. We're ready to go with the second half. Berwick will be moving from our right to our left. They will have the football. Ryan Vegas, Bo Sheptock, deep anticipating the kickoff from Jonathan Cardona. Cardona approaches, and the second half underway. It's an onside kick, and he gets by Liam Carroll once, but then Liam Carroll gets it on the second bounce. It went off him and bounced away, and he jumped on it to give Berwick the, the football. And I like the spirit of the part of Wyoming Valley West. No, I definitely I like it. They have nothing to lose. You know, they, they caught Berwick, obviously, on their heels there because they didn't expect that. They nearly got the onside kick. You know, uh, again, something that, uh, again, they have nothing to lose on that point. Plus, do you want to kick it deep to the likes of Bankus and them back there to, to obviously possibly have a, a good return? Well, it looks like Berwick will give that first string a chance at the football for one series they have it at their own 42 yard line toss sweep Lunzinski to Sheptock off the left Sheptock has the first down at the Valley West 46 yard line Good for it was a nice toss down. sweep to the left a little bit Not of scooter body in a way uh, Sheptock speed got to corner uh, credit to Valley West secondary came up and made the tackle 12 yards in the carry by Bo Sheptock who's having a Terrific night That's carried 12. the football. Yeah, 12 carries for 90 yards at this point. And Berwick has it first and 10 at the Wyoming Valley West 45 yard line. We're just underway. I should say six carries for 90. Sorry, Jim. Slot to the right side. I formation. Sheptock at the tail of the tandem. Call goes to him off the right side. Gets a couple to about the 
43-yard line. Second down coming. We are, of course, uh, in the mercy rule mode with Boeing to that 35 nothing lead. So the clock will continue to run on things that normally stop it, like incomplete passes, as Ethan Lear checks into that Berwick huddle. He did a lot of quarterbacking in the first half, but this looks like the Wildcat. Spencer Kishpaw has the snap go through his hands. Back into Berwick territory at the Bulldog 36-yard line. Huge loss. Didn't look like a bad snap. Ball just went through the hands of Spencer Kishpaw, normally a very sure-handed. It'll be a loss of 15 and 7, 22 yards, way back at the 35. Yeah, it looks like as the ball was coming, he was looking to see where he was going to run. He just took his eyes off the ball a little bit. It was a little high above his head, but it was catchable. I think he just took his eyes off it, looking where he was going to go and, and missed the ball. As Mike Bennett looks to the playbook and looks for plays on third down and 35. What do you go with from here? Well, he got a 34-yard pass completion earlier. <laughs> and Lonsinski's back in there. He can wing it. Slot to the left, wide receiver right. Third and long. Lonsinski back to throw. Big pass rush. Steps up into it, fires the sideline, has Spencer Kishball over midfield, and he gets to about the Spartan 45-yard line. He'll bring up a fourth and ten. Berwick has not punted this game, and they wouldn't necessarily have to do it here. They mark it the Spartan 43, so that's 22 on the on the catch. So it's fourth down and seven. And I expect Berwick to run a play from scrimmage here. Yeah, not a bad play. Okay, they ran something similar to that earlier where they kind of flooded the area uh, and got behind the linebackers. Uh, there was good block on the defense of uh, end at that point to allow Lonzitski to get around and, and be open to make that pass. Fourth and seven, and Berwick will use a timeout. 8.22 to go in the third. Bulldogs lead at 35-0. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Berwick. Radio. Digging deeper to make ends meet? Now you can get a 26% tax credit with a geothermal heat pump system from Climate Master. Climate Master geothermal systems tap the constant temperature of the earth to provide heating, cooling, and hot water while keeping your home comfortable all year long. And Climate Master systems are so efficient, you'll save up to 70% on your energy bill. The investment in a Climate Master system quickly pays for itself. Contact your local Climate Master dealer, Robert G. Dent Heating and Air Conditioning in Light Street. Go to robertgdentheating-ac.com. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. On Friday night, October 28th. Jim Doyle and Al Anaconis from Spartan Stadium in Kingston. We have eight minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Berwick following their timeout with the football, facing a fourth down and seven at the Wyoming Valley West 43-yard line. And they changed strategy at that timeout and they'll punt it away. Dre Wilk, his first punt of this game. No one deep for Wyoming Valley West. Punt sails high and will be downed around the 17, maybe the 18-yard line. So that's where the Spartans will put it in play. Their first possession of this third quarter. They trail 35 nothing. If you're just joining us, they lost their quarterback. Lucas Zansevic to an injury in that opening half. They went late in the half to Carson Brown, a sophomore. We expect to see him at the at the controls as they take over at their own 18. Are we still with that uh, first line defense in there? As Again, give him a little little bit of work yet here. I I'm imagine after this series, uh, we'll start seeing some uh, substitution. So first and ten. Spartans moving from our right to our left. They have it at their own 18-yard line. High formation behind the sophomore quarterback, Carson Brown, who has a slot to the right side. Mattis gets the call, looks for some room, and there is none there. Look like... Uh, Spencer Kishbaugh shot in from his linebacker position and got him by the ankles in the backfield. Loss of a yard. Back to the 17. Second down and 11 Tristan for 34 on the tackle. Wyoming Valley West. 
Second down call coming. Brown. Basically the third quarterback for the Spartans in there. Sansevich is on the sideline, but we wouldn't expect to see him with this score being what it is. It's like he does not have the shoulder pads on. Second and 11. Toss sweep left side. Madison, Billy Hansen with a good play from his corner position. Stood his ground, waited for Mattis to get to him, and made the stop. Yeah, they just had that corral. Also, big number 71, Harrison Snyder, stepped in there from his uh, defensive end position. Uh, they had nowhere to go. A mark at the 14. That's a loss of three. Third down and 14 for Wyoming Valley Third West. down, 14. Wide receiver to either side. Harrison Snyder, Mike Fell along that defensive front. Harrison Snyder and Rowan Slabinski. Here's a third and long. Brown back, and he is wrapped up for a loss back at the 10-yard line. Spencer Kishball wrapped him up. Not sure what that was going to be. It didn't have time to really be anything. No, they, did, they had very little time for anything to develop. Carson Brown on the keeper. So Brown on the keeper will lose four. And the... Hunt team on down. as Bo Sheptock stands back at the Valley West 40-yard line, anticipating Ingram back to punt. the punt from Kamal Ingram, who's been very, very busy huh. punting tonight. He's standing back at his goal line. And Berg should get great field position after this also. Line drive kick. Sheptock fields it at the 44. To the 40. To the 35. To the 25. 15. 10. 5. And he is in for a touchdown. Bo Sheptock, oh, 44 Sheptock yards on the punt for return touchdown. for the score. Yeah, it just opened up for him. Uh, there was one uh, Raleigh West defender there uh, coming down on him. There's a great block made there. Now, once he got that, they were, Burwick was trying to set up a return to the left-hand side. He came through the middle, kicked it out to the outside where the return men were lined up, and there was very easy uh, jaunt into the end zone. So Berwick has scored in a number of different ways. Runs, passes, interceptions, now a punt return. So Luke Peters will attempt the extra point for scoring of this second half. A hold by Dre Wilk. Ethan Lear, good snap. Blocked. Kick is blocked again. Second time on the on the night. And Wyoming Valley West has the blocked an extra point. Good. Time on the field. 523 to go in the third. Blocked. Berwick 41. Wyoming Valley West nothing. You're listening to Berwick Football and Pop Radio. More people in our area are choosing First Columbia Bank and Trust for their home mortgages. Is it time you discover why? First Columbia Bank offers competitive rates along with local expertise, local decisions, and local loan servicing. Let's see what First Columbia can do for you. Call today to get pre-qualified for a home loan from the number one mortgage lender in our area. Find out more or apply for your mortgage online at firstcolumbiabank.com. First Columbia Bank, with you every step of the way. Equal housing lender. First Columbia Bank. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Berwick's outstanding sophomore Bo Sheptog with a 44-yard punt return touchdown. His second touchdown of the game. Had a three-yard touchdown run following a 65-yard run. So he's had quite a night for these Bulldogs. Also had a long reception. As Berwick leads at 41-0. 523 Junior remaining in this grade. third quarter. Yeah, that uh, extra point area. was blocked by Jason Pearson. Junior uh, high away Tuesday. Came up through the middle. I, and if there was a, a negative side to tonight's game for Berwick, that would be it. You know, uh, better blocking on their extra points. Yeah, that's two of them has been blocked. And that has not been the case. Luke Peters coming in this game was 18 for 20 on extra points. He left foots it. Downfield, Mattis up the middle to 14, to the 20, to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, still on his feet over midfield. He's got room, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, and in for the touchdown. Finally, the home side has something to cheer, a brilliant kick return of 85 yards for Tyler Mattis. 
Yeah, it was great return. He brought it up to the left-hand side, kind of tight, tight rocked the uh, the sideline there. A couple Berwick players had shots at him, missed him, cut it back to the middle, ran it to his own player, which actually slowed him down a little bit. But then once he broke into the open, he took off from about 45, 35, 40 yards out, and just nobody was near him. Well, they like his future here. Tyler Mattis is a 5'11", 165-pound sophomore coming to this game. He was averaging over 12 yards a carry, but uh, limited carries with just 11. But he showed some speed there. Yes. yes, he did. Now some confusion on the field as they have not enough people getting alignment on. Berwick getting a player on. A lot of drama for this extra point with the <laughs> score of 41 to 6. Uncharted territory tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Cardona. He's a great story. If I get a chance, I'll, I'll tell you it. Snap, placement, Cardona's kick is blocked. There's a lot of that going around. Time on the field, 5.08 remaining in the third. Berwick 41, Wyoming Valley Berwick West 6. 41. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. When you're planning your next big event, weddings, concerts, church festivals, even construction sites, remember Preferred Portables has you covered. Preferred Portables offers a luxury restroom trailer that even has hot water. Have no power? No problem. They can provide a generator to keep the lights on. Preferred Portables can provide sanitary service to campgrounds, carvels, parks, parties, and even has an emergency service 24 hours a day. Contact Preferred Portables to learn about event and contractor pricing. Email preferredportables at gmail.com. Go Burrick Bulldogs! This is Burke football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Wyoming Valley West finally had something to cheer about. Uh, brilliant kick return by sophomore Tyler Mattis of 85 yards for a touchdown. That's a 41-6 Berwick lead, 5-0-8 remaining in this third quarter. As Cardona will kick it off this April, this kicker Jonathan Cardona will celebrate 10 years cancer free he battled leukemia as a as a youngster wow. has battled back from that just uh, from all I heard just a brilliant kid 4.1 great point average uh, president of the senior class uh, involved in Cardona soccer football sports. track and field he's a great story Jonathan Cardona was kicking off for the Spartans Bo Sheptock and Ryan Bankus Deep for Berwick. Cardona's low line drive kick. Bankus will field at the 14 to the 20 to the 25 to the 30 and tackle from behind at the 33 yard line. That's where Berwick will put it in play and flags all over the place and an altercation and more flags. And hopefully they get this thing settled. Coach is trying to keep the players off the field and officials have a lot to sort out here there's an official down I think <laughs> nope he just tackled the player well a player has come off for Wyoming Valley West was about to slam his helmet into the turf I don't know if he's oh, we have one at the, the center of the action one of the coaches for Valley West is needing to be escorted yeah this is this is a time when coaches need to keep their heads about them yep. when players are not so we'll see what the officials can do to sort things out I did not see what precipitated it, it looked like a I. simple return and the tackle and then far away from the tackle is where the skirmish started we see Ty Makarevich coming out, holding his face. I don't know if he's bleeding or not on that, but he doesn't even have a helmet. Somehow his helmet got taken off in that skirmish. Well, this could be a while because officials have a lot to sort out. Yeah. First of all, they've got a lot of hankies to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's about six or seven on the field, and law enforcement is out on the field making sure that everything calms down now. And boy, on on a play like that, obviously you, you you fear anyone getting hurt, but also you fear ejections. Yes. Especially if you're a Berwick and you're facing a Dallas team coming up next week, and you want to be at full strength, can't afford to have anyone 
missing any time in that Dallas game. Yeah, it was something away from the play because the tackle was made on the Valley West sideline over here. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of John after the tackle, which is normal. And then, then it just erupted in, in, in the center field there, right in the middle. Well, currently there are more police on the field than there are officials. <laughs> but uh, I think the coaches, for the most part, did a pretty good job of keeping the players from joining that. You know, everyone on the sideline wants, yeah. wants to join it. Yep. Even the uh, AD from Berwick, Orlando, was out there and uh, was able to escort a couple of Valley West players to the sideline. There's a player going off for Berwick. Yeah, I wonder if that's an ejection situation. 16. That would be Braylon Hawkins. No, I didn't, didn't see any like ejection for Wyoming Valley West. I don't know that it didn't happen because... They could have gone right under the bleachers here. Hard to believe just one player is involved. In yeah. There appear to be about 10. Uh, so we'll see. This all happened with 502 remaining in this third quarter. Mr. Hawkins had a nice police escort off the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen that. So let's see. The referee is giving us personal foul. There's a upset. Valley West. And he, no. Uh, was that? <laughs> I don't know. He scratched his ear or gave it the direction. I don't know. Well. Ejection. Was there two ejections? There's two ejections. Now here comes. I think it's, uh. Sean Reed. Yep. Is that number nine? Yep. Is it sure it's nine? It looks, I, 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 what I could tell it was. Okay, we don't want to give the wrong no. names for something like that. Uh, but we believe it was Sean Reed. We know it was Braylon Hawkins for Berwick. So we have, I, I would think these, this is going to be offsetting. And the ball will be where the kick returner brought it to the 33. So based on that, Jim, then next week for for Berwick, are there going to be down a player there for that first half? Yeah, I believe that's the way it goes. Now, Jack Baranski's having a, a talk with his team on the sideline, and I'll bet you it's something to the effect that that's the last of that. Mm -hmm. let's, let's play out this game. Yeah, there was a lot of you know stuff going on during the course of the game. You know, some chat. I, I didn't it. see a lot of that. I, 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 I noticed it once in a while. Uh, yeah, it didn't seem like a chippy game at all to me before this, uh, before this occurred. Yeah. So we have five minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. Things were moving along in this mercy rule mode game until a fracas on a kick return. And two ejections, one for either side. And Berwick will have the football. If I'm Mike Bennett, I don't have any starters in there right now. You know, just yeah. settle things down, put the subs in, run the football, and get out of here and get ready for Dallas. Yeah, and that's, you know, and they just don't want to see anything else happening at this point in time. You said just play the game out. So Jack Baranski has had his say with his team. We assume Mike Bennett did something similar on the, the far side. Looks like we have some full-scale substitutions there for Berwick. Yeah, Mike Vaughn will be the fullback. Tyler Winter will be the tailback in the eye. And Ethan Lear is the quarterback. He gives to Winter. Winner looking for running room, gets over the 35, out to about the 37-yard line as Tyler Winter, 16 carries on, on the season, gets his 17th, picks up three to the 37. Second down and seven for the Bulldogs. 
clock is stopped. The mercy rule, that should never happen. No. Keep the clock running. <laughs> the clock should be running. Why is the clock stopped? <laughs> Second down, seven. On a running play. Yet. Line. Oh, they just adjusted. It went from 424 to 411, but it still stopped. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Second down and seven. Slot to the right. Again, Vaughn ahead of Winter in the eye. Winter the call. Looks for some blocking off the right. Gets some. Gets out to the 39. It'll be third down and five for the Bulldogs. Another winner on a carry. Yeah, it's gonna be, looks like it's going to be pretty basic. Just leads. Let the fullback lead Number through. Two, Bass, Straight up blocking. Just party. try to find a hole and get some positive yardage. Third down calls. We'll see what the Bulldogs come up with. Third and five at their own 39-yard line. Ethan Lear looked pretty sharp in the couple of possessions that he directed in that opening half he's under center for the third and five receiver splits wide right offset eye fake to winner Lear keeps it lots of running room 40 45 it has the first down out the 48 yard line nicely done by Ethan Lear flags fly Lear after the Ethan. play yeah it was a nice bootleg play they had the student body to the right he faked the handoff, and like I said earlier, he has great hand skills. Uh, everybody went that way, got around the end, uh, making the stop for Valley West is number 22, Paul Riggs. So it was an 11-yard carry, but it's going to come back as we have a personal foul against Berwick. Well, that's the kind of call you personal don't want to see after we just yeah. witnessed in this opening half. Brings it all the way back to the 35 It'll bring up a third down and nine. Yeah, it's just, I guess the, the officials may be overcautious at this point in time. Just anything that looks like it's going to be a, a, sh a cheap shot or something, they're going to throw the flag. And it might just have been a good aggressive block in the secondary. Here we go. Third and nine, Berwick from their own 35 yard line. Third down. Clock nine. running under two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Bulldogs in control, leading this one 41 to 6. Slot to the left. Lear under center. Call goes to Tyler Winter. Hit behind the line. He'll lose yardage. Back to the 33 yard line. Loss of a couple. Tyler, a and the punt team will come on for the Bulldogs. Yeah, again, very conservative. Always it was just a lead to the left. Back to by 99. Um, had a very good line surge at that point. Met him in the backfield for the loss. Fourth down, call coming. You know, obviously, Ethan Lear is the backup quarterback and may see the rest of this game. But, you know, if you're being cautious, here's a player who fills in in the secondary once in a while. Is your long snapper, which is very, very important. Well, check that. It's only a second down for the 33. I don't know how he missed all that. As the call goes to Winter, and Winter will get a couple out to the 35-yard line. So they're calling it second down, now third down for Berwick. Time for perhaps one more play in this third quarter. Winter on the Again, carry. we hope to reconnect with uh, Jake Klein at the end of the game. We had trouble at halftime getting you those scores well probably what happened jim he had the first down on that long run then the penalty was after the first down brought it back okay and that's what reset all right that's right that would figure perfectly third down and 10. berwick i formation using a lot of the play clock as ethan lear looks up at it per instructions i'm sure Slot to the right, eye formation. Play clock under 10. Now it gets down to 5 and 4. Referee's about to step in as the third quarter comes to an end. With the score, Berwick 41, Wyoming Valley West 6. That is the end of You're the listening to Berwick Football and Pop Radio.
Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independent Sports Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Jim Doyle along with Dr. Alan Lonaconis. We are at Spartan Stadium in Kingston. And we are getting ready for the fourth quarter of play in a game that Boeing has had their way with. They lead Wyoming Valley West 41 to 6. As we start the fourth quarter, Berwick will be moving from our right to our left. And they're facing a third down and ten. Ethan Lear is the quarterback. Tyler Winter has been getting the majority of the carries. Mike Vaughn is the fullback. And First down, over the board. If it is, there is an injured player on the field, so we've got a lot of things going on here. Burley looks like they're. They're going to punt it away. So my guess is... It's just kind of kneeling there, so it's hard to tell what may have happened. Maybe got the wind knocked out of them, or... I want to remind you that Dallas will be at Crespin Field next week. We're looking forward to seeing that team. Looks like it might be a, a, an arm or a hand. Mercy rule halves are supposed to fly by. This one has not. not too many stoppages <laughs> for extracurriculars. You are reminded the Tioga Avenue gate is closed. The opposite, and, and again, the opposite end of the field. Dallas the scoreboard is closed. Into Crispin Field next week, as usual, seven o'clock kickoff, and as usual, Exit our coverage. East Avenue side here on Pop Radio will begin with the Coach Bennett Show at six. As Devin Suda back anticipating the punt from Dre Wilk. I'm sorry we're going to miss that Dallas game. I was kind of looking forward to see them play. Yeah, they are by all means the, the real deal. Wow. Come on, officials. <laughs> they're up, well, they're running time off the clock. The clock should have been running at some point, so they're running it down now because it was at 11.05. They're bringing it down to 10... Under 10.30 right now. Let's we'll see if Berwick can run out the clock on this play. Yeah. <laughs> Officials frantically yelling up at the box. Yeah, get it right. And, and motioning. They're done down to 10.22. Not a lot of action, but the clock is running. Yep. Well, the officials are keeping the time on the field. That's the actual official time. So they just want to make sure that the it's 10.08. They ran it all the way down to 10.08. <laughs> So here we go. Ethan Lear about to snap. Trey Wilk about to punt. Devin Suda back to return. Kick is short. Very, very high. And will be downed by a Bulldog about the 35-yard line. So Wyoming Valley West 
will get it with 9.50 to go in this game. And Berwick leading this one 41-6. to And yeah, that was Gavin Jones that uh, was able to down it on that punt. So Bulldogs with the big lead and the subs in. Wyoming Valley West score coming in this quarter. Excuse me, in the third quarter on a terrific return by Tyler Mattis. Now, there's no timeout called here, but Valley West really taking their time as they're on on the sideline. Yep. Coach giving the youngsters uh, some instructions here. A lot of instructions. (laughs) Get their money's worth. Okay, here we go. Wyoming Valley West, first and ten at their own 35-yard line. Let's see if we can go a play or two without a flag. (laughs) Slot to the right. Backs in an open set. Carson Brown, under center. Rolls right. Fires a pass. Has a completion. There's a flag. <laughs> and another flag. And another one. And another and three. Brown to Damascus. Oh. Complete. You know, these are one of those games where you just wish you could say, that's it, guys. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Game over. This can only get worse. Yeah, I understand that I'm trying to, you know, keep control of it, but I'm not sure what happened there. There was yeah. something away from the play to backside between one of the linemen of Berwick and a blocker from uh, Valley West, and then there was something here at the sidelines on the tackle. Well, my prayer for one play without a <laughs> penalty went unanswered as we had three flags flying. Well, I wonder if, oh, well, I'm not even going to venture to guess. <laughs> There's nothing more intriguing than the officials' conference uh-huh. when you have no idea what the conference is about. Referee looking our way. And they already moved the ball back. Personal foul. Right. Wyoming Valley West. Well, there were three flags. They're marking it off against the Spartans. Now they're coming back. <laughs> so there was two on Valley West and one on Berwick? <laughs> I don't know. Well, they, they lost five yards. That's all I can tell you at this point. I apologize for not adding more drama to this, but I just <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> they're putting the ball at the 30. So was that was that a completion to the player? Did they get yardage for that? Or? I have no idea. Three flags later, the first ball is at 15. the 30-yard line. It is a first and 15 for Wyoming Valley West. Can we get a play without a penalty? Let's see. Brown under center. Toss sweep right side. Running play to Mattis. Nice effort by him. He gets out to the 39. Looking around the field, and there it is. A flag. <laughs> no. Oh. No. No flag. No flag. Okay. A, flag a flag would not be the scoop. Okay. <laughs> the flag is, n- the scoop is no flag on the play. Okay. I was, I was looking down, right? <laughs> you said there it is. A gain of nine on the play. Second down call coming. Clock running, mercifully. 8.08 to go. Berwick leading 41-6. to six. Slot to the right side. Carson Brown is the sophomore quarterback for the Spartans. Gives to Mattis, trying to get outside right. Forced out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Tymere Wilkerson in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Take a look at some other players on the field for Berwick. With these uh, subs coming on, Alex Estrella is in the secondary for the Bulldogs. Braden Schaefer is in that defensive unit as well. So we have a third down and about three for Wyoming Valley West at their 43-yard line. Slot to the left, eye formation. Brown, toss sweep left side to Mattis. Mattis will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Even with the subs in, Berwick getting it done defensively. Looked like Gavin Jones 
5'7", 177-pound sophomore in on the tackle for the Bulldogs. No gain on the play. Fourth and three. Clock running, 6.49. We'll probably see a play from scrimmage for Wyoming Valley West. They look to the sideline for the play. It's fourth and a short three. Slot to the right side. Brown, the sophomore quarterback under center. Gives the ball to Mattis. Has room off the right side. Has the first down and then some. Tyler Mattis, still on his feet, gets to the Bowick 46-yard line. Nice job by him. 11 yards on the carry by Tyler Mattis. First and 10. Wyoming Valley West at the 45-yard line of Berwick. It was a nice play. It was just a a lead off the right side in the C gap. Uh, They were able to turn Berwick's end around. Uh, the lead back came up, picked up the inside linebacker, uh, which then freed Mattis up to get into the secondary. Mattis will get a breather now. Paul Riggs replaces him as the main running back for the Spartans. As operating out of the gun now is Carson Brown. He's back to throw, and he's looking, looking. He's going long to Wells. Double coverage incomplete. Good coverage downfield for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it was basically two receiver pattern. One receiver went off to the left, did a deep post or deep flying, and the receiver on the, the Wyoming Valley West side was just a fly, but it was a double coverage there. It would have had to have been a perfect pass. That double coverage was by Tymir Wilkerson and Braden Schaefer. So it's second down and 10. Spartans at the Bulldog 45 as we go under five minutes remaining in the game. Valley West offensive line gave him a lot of time because that was a long developing play. Second down call coming. Brown gives to Riggs looking for room. He's brought down the 42 yard line. Well, that's a nice defensive play by Everett Snyder of the Bulldogs, a ninth grader. Makes the play. Riggs will get four to the 41. It'll be third down and six for Wyoming Valley West. It was a very nice defensive play. He shed off his blocker pretty well, slid off, and got him uh, right about, you know, almost the line of scrimmage. So here we go. Third down call coming. Third and six. I formation slot to the left. Brown toss sweep to Mattis. Mattis trying to get outside right, is forced out of bounds. Mattis on the carry. We'll see where they mark the football. It looks like he's going to get it, Jim. He's right at the 35. And they are moving the sticks. So first and 10. Wyoming Valley West trying to score their first offensive touchdown of the game. Their score came on a long kick return by Tyler Mattis. They have it at the Berwick 35-yard line. They have their full complement of timeouts left. 3.46 3.46 to go. But again, we're in the mercy rule, so that clock can move quickly. So, Brown under center. I formation behind him. They give us to Mattis. Mattis gets a great block downfield, gets outside. Some blocking after the play. There's a flag down. We're going to have 15 coming on Wyoming Valley West. They just kept blocking. Well, after the play was downfield. Yeah, they were triple teaming uh, Cam Gomez. Uh, there was a great block on Gomez to free Mattis, but then uh, two of the other players got involved there after Mattis was already down by the 10 yard line. Are they going the wrong way? <laughs> what are we going to call it on now? Against Berwick and against Valley West. Offsetting, it's after the play. So the play will go Yes. to the 17-yard line. It's 18 yards on the pickup, first and 10. Not sure what the Berwick player who was triple-teamed and being blocked five seconds after the play, <laughs> how he got a personal foul, but, but he did. And now the Spartans will use a timeout. 2.34 to go, 41-6 Bulldogs. You're listening to Berwick Football and Pop Radio. 
Northeast Pennsylvania is your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are First Keystone Community Bank, member FDIC, and Equal Housing Lender. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. We have two minutes and 34 seconds remaining in this one. Final score, the only thing in doubt. Berwick leads Wyoming Valley West 41-6. Spartans have it at their own, at the Berwick 17-yard line with a first down. See what they come up with following that timeout. They have three receivers to the left. Sophomore quarterback. Carson Brown under center. No touching. No touching. Anyway. As he gives on the end around to Mattis, makes a great move at the 15 to the 10 to the 5 and gets in for the touchdown. Well, that's a nice move by that sophomore, Tyler Mattis. He left a would be tackler for dead out around the 10 yard line. Yeah, great move. You know, got good, good speed, good quicks to the outside. Like I said, gave him a little juke and spun him around. So Tyler Mattis has both of the touchdowns for the Spartans in this game. An 85-yard kick return, and now a 17-yard run, capping a 70-yard scoring drive. Jonathan Cardona will attempt Number the extra point. On the field yeah, Mattis has 13 point. carries for 61 yards now on the touchdown. Now it is not Cardona. It is the female place kicker. Extra point and good. she kicks it up and good. So Lauren Ritchie with the extra point. 2.21 to go in the game. Berwick 41. Wyoming Valley West 13. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Pop Radio. Family tradition is the foundation of Nespoli Jewelers, a family tradition started by Joseph Nespoli and continued by his grandson, Jonathan. For three generations, Nespoli Jewelers have prided themselves on mixing fine with fashion. Jonathan can customize your engagement ring and wedding bands, design a unique piece of jewelry inspired by you, or simply help you find an affordable gift. Service, quality, creativity. Nespoli Jewelers, yesterday's principles, today's creations. East Front Street in Berwick and online at NespoliJewelers.com. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. Two minutes, 21 seconds remaining in this one. Berwick leading Wyoming Valley West by a score of 41 to 13. Spartans get a touchdown from scrimmage. Their first of the game, Tyler Mattis with a beautiful 17-yard touchdown run. And the extra point by Laura Ritchie, who's going to kick off for the Spartans. Deep for Berwick, Tymere Wilkerson. Number 21, Laura Ritchie. And kick off Tyler Winter. As Berwick will get one more possession in this game. Ritchie has the signal. Kick is away. Tyler Winter on the hop at the 18-yard line, the 20, the 25, and brought down over the 30 at about the 33-yard line. And some more. Well, Do we got a flag again? Yeah. Yep. Yep. There was a little more extracurriculars going on in the kickoff. I just can't believe players are still doing this yeah. this late in the game, and that that's just stupidity. <laughs> just absolute stupidity. Personal foul against Berwick. And 2.14 to go. Hopefully, Berwick keeps it on the ground. Hopefully, Wyoming Valley West keeps their timeouts for next week. <laughs> and we get this out of here before anyone else gets ejected. We've had two of those. Berwick at their own 34-yard line. Wide receiver to either side, eye formation. From the 34, Ethan Lear is still the quarterback. Call goes straight ahead to the 30-yard line, a loss of three on the part of Tyler Winter. 
Wyoming Valley West will not use any timeouts. Obviously, Berwick won't either. The clock winds down, 1.44 to go. Stay with us following the game. Post-game show will include scores from Jake Klein, stats from Al Wanaconis. As we get you ready for next week with a big appearance by the Mountaineers of Dallas at Crispin Field. Lear, seen a lot of action in this one. Under center. Gives the winner again. Hit behind the line. He'll lose a couple more yards back to the 29-yard line. As the clock winds down, Jack Baranski has emptied his bench as well. Spartans will go to 0-6 on the season. You mentioned Berwick at home against Dallas next week. Wyoming Valley West will be on the road at Williamsport. Last we heard, Williamsport was well ahead of Central Mountain. Millionaires will go into that game off a victory. Third down call. Probably the last play of this game. Referee signals up to the press box something about the time. So I do give the Fishing crew some credit. They, they don't is, have to run. This has not been an easy game no. to, to just, do. Yeah, they don't even have to run a play here. And they won't. And that will do it as the clock winds down. The final here tonight, Bowie, 41, Wyoming Valley West, 13. Stay with us. The wrap-up of the scoring. The stats, scores from other games, all upcoming. You're listening to Berwick Football on Pop Radio. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick. The roofing experts for all of our listening area. With over 30 years experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your roofing, decks, and siding. Specializing in metal roofs, rubber roofs, and shingles. Most of the work is done in one day. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Now located in Dushore and also serving Bradford and Sullivan counties with owner Harry Titus, a supporter of the Berwick football team and St. Jude Children's Hospital. Call 570-752-4351. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident, Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faves, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. As a community bank, First Columbia Bank and Trust knows the value of helping our young people dream, excel, and reach their goals. For more than 120 years, First Columbia has been committed to helping our communities prosper and our youth succeed. We're proud to invest in our youth through athletics, the arts, and education. First Columbia Bank and Trust, with you and your children every step of the way. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. This is Berg football coach Mike Bennett. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Pop Radio. There were no player handshakes uh, exchanged after this one. It's uh, not necessarily poor sportsmanship on either side. I think it was agreed upon by the two coaches because I did see uh, Mike Bennett of Berwick, Jack Baranski of Wyoming Valley West uh, exchanging handshakes at midfield. Uh, Mike also called over Isaiah Cobb, who's out with the injury, and uh, expressed greetings to him. Uh, because of some of the incidents that happened in the game, especially the outbreak with 5.02 to go in the third quarter, when there were several ejections and lots of flags flying, I think uh, coaches decide, let's, let's not take a chance of someone saying something or doing something in that uh, in that handshake line and just let it be. So I, I think the coaches handled it as they should as Berwick wins it handily here tonight. 
by a final score of 41 to 13. Bulldogs scored early and often. Their first possession, three plays, 65 yards. Dre Wilk from Wildcat raced 40 yards down the right sideline for the score. Luke Peters with the extra point. Berwick led by a score of seven to nothing. On their second possession, and we'll call this the Independence Ford drive of the game. Quickest drive, two plays, 62 yards. Matt Linzinski, 34-yard touchdown pass to Dre Wilk. Luke Peters, extra point attempt was blocked, but Berwick led 13 to nothing. Later that first quarter, Ethan Lear was inserted at quarterback and did a terrific job. Directed a five-play, 57-yard scoring drive. Capped it on an eight-yard run of his own. His 37-yard run was the longest play of the drive. Matt Lonsinski came in, threw a two-point conversion pass to Spencer Kishbaugh, and Berwick led 21-0 after the opening quarter. Early in the second quarter, Bo Sheptock capped a two-play drive with a three-yard touchdown run. He deserved it. He set it up on a double reverse, getting the ball from Ryan Bankers going 65 yards to set up his own touchdown run. Luke Peters with the extra point, 28-0 Berwick. Then the Bulldogs got a score from their defense. Their heat on the quarterback, Lucas Zanzevic, was intense. Zanzevic trying to avoid a sack in his own territory. Got the pass away, but went right to Rowan Slabinski, who raced 15 yards for a Berwick touchdown. Luke Peters with the extra point. Berwick led at the half by a score of 35 nothing. The Bulldogs' only score of the third quarter came on special teams. A 44-yard punt return by sophomore Bo Sheptock. Kick again was blocked, second one of the game that Berwick suffered, but the Bulldogs led 41-0. On the ensuing kick, finally, some excitement for the home crowd. A terrific 85-yard kick return by sophomore Tyler Mattis. The kick for the extra point was blocked. Berwick led 41-6 after three quarters. And Wyoming Valley West finally got on the board with an offensive touchdown with 2.21 to play as they completed a 70-yard drive engineered by Carson Brown, the sophomore who came on in the first half after the injury to starting quarterback Lucas Sansevich. It was Tyler Mattis again. This one from 17 yards out. Nice run. In fact, a, a beautiful, beautiful move down around the 15-yard line. Got it from 17 yards out. Lauren Ritchie came on and kicked the extra point. That was with 2.21 to go. That was the final score of the game. Berwick wins it 41-13. to Stats in this game, Al Conus. Yes, thank you, Jim. Uh, again, it's it still you know showed uh, Berwick's dominance, even though in the second half Berwick didn't have that much in, uh, in offense. Uh, due to the nature of the game, but again, they, they did very well offensively as well as defensively. For Wyoming Valley West, they finished the game tonight with 27 rushes for 70 yards and one touchdown. They were 3 of 8 in passing for only 16 yards uh, for a total of 86 total yards on the night. The majority of that yardage came from Tyler Mathis, uh, he rushed the ball for 13 uh, attempts for 61 yards and his one touchdown. Uh, Carson Brown rushed twice for minus two yards. Uh, Paul, sorry, <coughs> got caught. Uh, Riggs, sorry, Am. Paul Riggs. So we'll get the. Uh, you ready to go? <laughs> I got it out. <laughs> Eight rushes for, uh, and he only had one yard. Uh, let's see. And then we had Devil Sodra had one rush for two yards. And Zemkevich, the quarterback that went out, he had uh, three rushes for minus four yards. Uh, in the passing category, we had Zemkevich. He had four, uh, or sorry, five attempts. He had one completion, one interception uh, for 14 total yards. Brown came in, only threw the ball three times, so a total of four yards. So we, that's why we saw only about 16 yards uh, in receiving. Uh, Sudro had minus five yards in uh, one catch. 
Okay, Wells had one catch for, th- for three yards. Riggs had one catch for 19 yards. And Tide Makarovich had one catch for one yard. Uh, they were penalized, uh, believe it or not, for about 70 yards that we could tell <laughs> at this, or I'm sorry, 80 yards that we could tell at this point. Uh, the big highlight was obviously Mattis on 85-yard kick return. Uh, they had 135 yards in kick returns uh, tonight. Uh, very few first downs. They only had about six first downs on the whole evening. Uh, so they ended up with 86 total yards. Good for the Berwick defense, and that's the type of performance Coach Bennett obviously wanted to see. Uh, for the Berwick Bulldogs, uh, they were 9-for-9 nine nine passing. Uh, they had 98 yards, one touchdown. They rushed 18 times for 183 yards and three touchdowns for a total of 281 total yards. Uh, as far as individuals concerned, Ryan Bankus rushed the ball three times for 16 yards. Bo Sheptock rushed the ball seven times for 92 yards. Uh, Drew Wilk rushed the ball once for 40 yards and a touchdown. Sheptock obviously had the touchdown also. Uh, Spencer Kishbaugh rushed the ball once in the second half for minus 22 yards. Uh, he's targeted with the, uh, the, the snap that was over his head. Uh, then Jim Diandandra. Did not have any rushes, and Lear uh, had three rushes for 53 yards. And then uh, Kyle Winter came in, obviously, in the second half. He ended up with seven rushes for seven total yards. So uh, in the second half, obviously, uh, the Burke offense didn't do a whole lot. Receiving Spencer Kishbaugh, three receptions, 43 yards. Ryan Bankus, one reception, minus two yards. Drew Wilk, two receptions for 63 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Bo Sheptock had three receptions for 24 yards. Uh, the Bulldogs were penalized uh, for 70 yards on the night. Uh, kick returns, they only had about uh, 30 some 31 yards uh, on kick returns because obviously uh, Valley West didn't get to kick that often. Uh, punt returns, we had 44 yards. Uh, so uh, highlights as far as anything, like I said, what they need to look at and work on, uh, their, their point after attempts, blocking in the middle to stop that, keep uh, out of the penalty situation with the personal fouls. Uh, but I think it's a good warm-up for them going into Dallas next week. So the final here is 41-13 Berwick. For a look at other scores, let's return to the studios of Pop Radio and Jay Klein. Well, we got a final score for that Dallas Hazelton game. It's uh, Dallas beating Hazelton 42 to 21. Crestwood at 45, Wilkesbury at 14. That's in the fourth quarter. Final score for Ampington Heights and Valley View. Valley View wins it 21 to 14. Scranton 38, Wyoming Area 7 in the fourth quarter. Williamsport 35, Central Mountain 10 at the half. Royer Run 14, Wood Bloomsburg 7 in the fourth quarter. Loyal Sock 48, Central Columbia nothing in the third. And a Sunday, Southern Columbia beats Montoursville 34 to 16. And as Mon- Mont Carmel 54, Midwest nothing in the fourth quarter. Shimokin 51, Shikalemi 14 in the third quarter. Danville 51, Lewisburg nothing in the fourth quarter. And a final score for the Muncie Columbia Montour Votek Muncie game. Muncie wins it 48 to 16. For Pop Radio Sports, I'm Jake Klein. Okay, thank you very much, Jake. Right here, Wyoming Valley West with the loss falls to 0 and 6. They'll be on the road at Williamsport next Friday. For the Bulldogs, they improved to 3 and 3. They'll be home against that powerhouse unbeaten Dallas next Friday at Crispin Field, 7 o'clock kickoff. We hope you'll join us for the broadcast. As usual, we'll start with the Coach Bennett Show at 6. The final again from here, Berwick 41, Wyoming Valley West 13. For Al Conis and our producer Jay Klein, this is Jim Doyle reminding you, you're live on Pop Radio. You've been listening to Berwick Bulldog Football on Pop Radio. Brought to you by First Columbia Bank and Trust. With you every step of the way. Welsh's Towing and Repair, Towing, Recovery, and Lockout Services. Axis Gymnastics Academy in Bloomsburg. Independence Ford, Rattle 11 in Bloomsburg. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Cooling, the way the earth intended. First Keystone Community Bank. Yesterday's traditions, tomorrow's visions. Mason's Monogram Service for all your Bulldog merchandise. Robert G. Dent Heating and Air Conditioning and Lights. Street, Reds Roofing, the Roofing Ninjas in Berwick, Lehigh Valley Health Network, the region's leader in orthopedic and sports medicine, the Mayo Funeral Homes of Berwick and Shikshini, and by Wagner's Trophies and Engravables, Main Street in Bloomsburg.